Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. How did you say? It didn't take Tsunade a day to use Tony's suggestion and there were currently five of her clones doing paperwork with her in the Hokage's office. Shizun was on cloud nine, because due to the speed at which everything was completed, her work became much smoother and various village projects that were stalled could be resumed. I said I want to leave the village for a while, Tony repeated. Why? The original Tsunade stopped her hands and raised her head to look at him seriously and listen carefully. I want to go to the capital of the country of fire and visit the other main ninja villages, to open branches of my business, Tony explained, since it wasn't something particularly secret. It's really necessary. Tsunade frowned at the thought. Going to the capital and opening some food shops was not a problem, they could even leave a better impression on the daimyo, but entering the other villages was. They could try to kidnap or attack when Tony reveals his identity, trying to get his secrets or steal his property. I think I mentioned my idea to you a while ago, Tony reminded him as he brushed the matter off. For starters, the prices of my shops outside of the village will be around twice as expensive for normal food and three times as expensive. For which it has some mild effects, which will drain a major chunk of your money if you want my ninja groceries. And I won't leave anyone in charge that they can manipulate, you know that my shop assistants and cooks are special. The only thing they will accomplish if they try to do anything to the business is to permanently lose a nearby supply of the best food they have ever tasted. I also intend for my alchemy to watch and collect information from the stores, they are so adorable that they will win the affection of children and by extension, parents. It is enough for them to feel comfortable with their presence and they start talking about random things, without expecting that the sweet creature next to them is a spy. Also, also. Shizun and Tsunade were listening to Tony's plan once more and couldn't help but wince at the full picture. If all goes as expected, the money and information in Tony's hands will cause him to rise several ranks in the village. This was completely different from Jiraiya, although he made some money and the information gathering from him was good, it couldn't compare to the scale Tony was thinking of. So I have your permission to be away for a while. Tsunade tapped her fingers on the table as he thought. How much time will you need to do everything? I have no idea, Tony shrugged, the expansion is going to be huge and I'll need to fix a lot of problems and probably even more that I haven't realized yet. But if it makes you calmer, I will send a report every month through my summoning, I will return to the village every now and then to relax, and regardless of how far I manage to go, I don't want to spend more than three years on the matter. To be specific, he wants to keep an eye out for Naruto's return to get a rough idea of when the plot will start moving again. Kane's attack on Kanoha among other things will be problematic. Maybe in a year, he can report some rumors so that Tsunade can take some further action. Okay, actually it's a good idea, it's just that you seem too young to start something like that Tsunade side as he rubbed his hand over his forehead okay, I'll allow you to leave the village, but there are conditions. Shoot. Tony was fine with that, the odd thing would have been if he hadn't mentioned any. You said that the maximum that you will dedicate to the expansion will be three years, then, when you return, I want you to take the test to become a jonin. Don't look at me like that, the fact that you have a prosperous business doesn't overlap with the fact that you're a Kanoha ninja. I'm not going to let you get weak just because of some money and influence, self-strength comes first. Sounds good to me, Tony nodded. With his gourmet cells and some training, he should be able to reach a level of strength enough to pass the test with no problem. Then he smiled is it a bet? Tsunade blinked and for a moment was tempted to say yes, but remembering her current position and what would happen if she won, she shook her head firmly. She wasn't going to risk Tony. Never. Too bad. Tony hoped that he would accept and perhaps a mission would be generated in the system. Besides that, you won't be able to take Karen with you. She has been studying very hard and I have been too busy with the position of Hokage, but thanks to your idea of clones, now I will be able to teach her properly. Besides, she might even be joined by another Kunoichi from your class. Sakura Hirono. Tony mentioned unconsciously. How did you know? Tsunade was stunned beyond words by Tony's accuracy. She hadn't even told Shizen of her decision yet. Intuition, Tony winked at her as she replied in a casual tone. Okay Tsunade didn't want to stray from the topic, so she suppressed her curiosity. Have you ever used chakra paper? Tony suddenly went blank and felt like swearing. 
because he always forgot about the same thing. I did not do it. To be a qualified jonin, you need to master your chakra nature transformation to a certain standard. If you do not know your affinities, you will only hit blindly. I have some papers here, take one and let's see your natures. Tony took the seemingly ordinary piece of paper and imbued it with chakra. The paper was torn into five pieces, revealing the nature of the wind. One of the pieces caught fire and was reduced to ash, revealing the nature of the fire. Another crumpled, revealing the nature of the lightning. Another collapsed, revealing the nature of the earth. The penultimate one got soaked, revealing the nature of the water. As for the last one, its color changed to pale pink, which caused question marks to appear above the heads of those present. What the heck does this change mean and why does it look so familiar? In response to the host's doubts, the chakra paper has been transformed into edible sugar paper under the influence of the power of the devil fruit, which the paper interpreted as a kind of natural chakra. System, is it because of you that I have all the chakra nature transformations? Tony thought. Negative. That is also caused by the particular transformation trait of the devil fruit that the host ate. The original natures of the host were water and earth. As Tony mentally conversed with the system, he was oblivious to the incredulous looks everyone was giving him. Typically, a ninja would have one, and perhaps with some luck, two chakra natures. Three was a rare talent on its own, but all five at once. And what the hell is that pink paper? This boy is a monster were the thoughts of the ANBU hiding in the Hokage's office. The shock made them feel somewhat stressed for some reason. When their shift was over, they would go get something to eat at the cuckoo store to calm down. Ding! A new quest has been generated. Ask. What food helps you relax when you are tense? Leave an image in the comments and explain why. Ding! New quest The Birth of the Gourmet Mafia. Task successfully establish cuckoo shop branches in all five major ninja villages and form your own underground organization. They will grant you money, influence and fame. Hidden Leaf Village completed. Hidden Sand Village not completed. Hidden Cloud Village not completed. Hidden Rock Village not completed. Village Hidden in the Mist not completed. Optional task Each land has its original dishes or characteristic ingredients, now it's time to make them your own. Discover as many local specialties as possible. Reward Devil Fruit Awakening Gourmet Judges 3-Pack Aqua Lagoon Salt 1-Piece Substantial and Comprehensive Increase in Host Strength. Optional Reward Chef Nianta Log Horizon. Depends on amount discovered. Due to the host's self-imposed restrictions, the time limit for carrying out this mission is 3 years. Note Borders Be Damned, Fine Dining is for Everyone. Tony examined the mission and shrugged. He already had plans to do exactly that, so he was actually getting rewards conveniently. Now, Tsunade assigned him a grade A mission which was to deliver a scroll to each village on different miscellaneous matters. The person who can take care of said scroll will either be the Kage or someone important enough to discuss with Tony opening his shop in the village, so again, it's convenient. The trip was going to be kind of boring, since it wasn't just Karen who couldn't accompany him, neither would Enko and Taiyuya. Since Tony removed the drawbacks of the Cursed Seal, Anko was able to access two new forms that made her more powerful and the best person to help her get familiar with them is Taiyuya. At the same time, Anko would teach her some Jonin knowledge that Taiyuya did not have access to when she was under Orochimaru's orders. But not everything is negative, since Anko finally allowed him to sign the snake summoning contract. She actually should have been able to sign it right after the Chunin exam, but too much happened. She though she still has an outstanding favor for Menko to use. At the moment, she can only summon common snakes, nothing as huge as Manda and Ko. As soon as she travels to Ryuichi's cave, she will put it off for now. She said goodbye to everyone and left the village, heading to her first destination the grass village. Oh yes, Tony did not forget the treatment Karen and her mother received. Now that he could roam free for a few years, it was the perfect time to act. After arriving at the grass village, Tony created some clones that transformed into civilians and were sent to investigate. Unlike the five big villages, the grass village didn't have anything like a barrier around it, so it wasn't difficult to sneak into it. He basked in the sun with half a pineapple in hand as he drank the tropical fruit mix inside. After a few hours, the clones dissipated and he gained the memories of the observations from him. Looks like I won't have as many regrets as I thought. 
he shook his head irritably. It was not only the ninjas of the place who acted with arrogance and thirst for power, even the civilians had a detestable attitude. Maybe that's why there were so few children, it's hard to find love when you're insufferable. He knocked out the children and left them in a secluded place before proceeding with the plan. Summoning Technique Forest of Gluttony The ground of the grass village trembled, and a huge plant lifted up the village in its center. The ninjas were alarmed and tried to figure out what was going on, while Tony just waited. And just as he deduced, it didn't take long for someone to take the food from the forest. After that person enjoyed it and nothing happened, more people followed. Bad selection. Two days later. Have you heard the rumors? The grass village has disappeared without a trace. Not even the buildings have been left behind. Who could have done such a thing? And how did you find out? Kazuho's grandson's wife's wife's brother-in-law's cousin's sister's daughter told me. Two women were gossiping in the inn while Tony sampled the local speciality, mushrooms in a wild berry sauce. Nothing remarkable unfortunately. The children of the grass village had been placed in an orphanage along with an anonymous sum of money large enough to cover their costs until their adulthood. Tony didn't have the heart to eliminate innocent children and he hoped he never would. He currently was on his way to the capital of the country of fire, where he would open some shops before leaving for the village of sand in the country of wind. It would be very convenient to have a few places in a place with such commercial influence and where he could find many things. As for why he decided to go to the sand village, it is because he is quite confident that it will be the easiest village of all. Sure, it doesn't have a great economy, but such a nutritious and stable food source was certainly attractive to them. That, and the fact that they currently didn't have a kazakage. He just needed to talk to the council or whatever was keeping the village running. Perhaps he would even pay Gara and Tamari a visit, he wanted to see if they would try to move against him. Kakuro. Nobody likes Kankuro, he has been too influenced by Chio and his puppets. After some thought, Tony decided to join a caravan that he had to make a stop at the sand village before continuing on his journey. The reason was simple, he didn't feel like walking under the scorching sun while his feet were baked on contact with the hot sand. And speaking of hot sand, he heard that they have a type of cooking that consists of burying the ingredients in the sand to take advantage of the heat and cook it, he should give it a try to see if it's tasty enough. Wait, maybe Gara was inspired by that for his famous desert funeral move? Crazy. So this is the sand village. Tony looked at the curious architecture and the people around him. Although he was wearing comfortable clothes for the heat, he tied the Kanoha sash on his arm to be recognized and act as a messenger rather than a tourist. He was about to start looking for the Kazakage's office to see how he would deliver Tsunade's scroll, when a voice called out to him much to his surprise. Tony. Tony stopped his foot in mid-rays and turned around to look at the person who called out to him curiously. Almost everyone he knew was in Kanoha, so the fact that someone knew his name outside of the village was interesting. Tamari. How long? It was hard to forget Gara's sister's spiky blonde hair. What brings you here? Tony asked. I should be the one to ask you that question, this is my village. What if I tell you that I came for tourism? I wouldn't believe you. Good, because it wouldn't be the truth either, Tony agreed as he turned and started to walk away. Nice to see you again, see you. Yeah Tamari felt that something was out of place hey, come back here. What do you want? Tony sighed tiredly. Answer my question seriously. Tamari complained as he stomped several times on the ground in protest. Okay, okay, Tony raised his hands in surrender, you don't know how to take a joke. Tamari narrowed her eyes at him, the threat implicit in his gaze. I just came to deliver something to your village on behalf of the Hokage, maybe try some local specialties and open a business, nothing more Tony opened up to placate the annoying Kunoichi a bit. So you're a messenger? Tamari raised one of his eyebrows. I think so, Tony agreed as he looked at her, actually, now that I think about it, it's great that we ran into each other. Given what happened to the previous Kazakage by the way, my condolences I have no idea who is in charge of the village. Could you enlighten me? The Kazakage who died, Raza, was the father of Gara, Kankuro, and Tamari, so his death should have made them sad. It should, but since he was a terrible father who used and treated his youngest son as a weapon of war, there really wasn't much drama with his son's deaths. And since not enough time has passed for Gara to win the approval of the village and be named the new Kazakage, 
Tony is somewhat at a loss. If only Pakura were still alive. Kayasama and Ebizasama are the ones running these things at the moment Tamari told him as he gestured for her to follow her I just hope for your sake that whatever you bring is good news. The village superiors are not happy lately. Tony rolled his eyes at the statement, though he appreciated the advice. The Sand Village failed to attack Kanoha so after the incident they had to give generous compensation to bury the matter. Since their financial situation is already not good and they lost a Kazakage, to say they were in the red would be an understatement. As they say, don't blame the messenger for the message he delivers, Tony replied as he followed her and looked around, by the way, does your village have any famous local dishes? Hey. Tamari paused for a moment, thinking that Tony was being sarcastic due to the lack of food in his village, but then she remembered his fondness for food and understood that the question was genuine and without malice in fact, we have some. The fish from the sands are quite delicious if you can find them and we have a sweet made with dates and other products from the region. How about after I deliver my message, we go eat something? Tony suggested. He didn't feel like wandering the streets in the heat, he preferred someone who knew where to try that food to take him with him. This time, Tamari turned around in surprise. Are you asking me on a date? Her. She looked at him with wide eyes. What? Tony didn't immediately understand how he changed the subject so quickly, it took her a few seconds to see that she had misunderstood I don't know the streets of the village and I thought you could guide me. Even though you're pretty, we're still too young for such things, don't you think? Seeing that Tamari nodded somewhat uncertainly, believing that her words made sense, Tony sighed in relief. Even Shikamaru was afraid of her when he married her, he had no interest in establishing a romantic relationship with someone so scary. He didn't care that his future wife had some character, but this was on another level. And what did I gain by taking you there? Now Tamari was a little upset with herself for misunderstanding Tony, but for some unknown reason, she blamed it on the boy. Why did it have to be so ambiguous? Tony knew that he would have to give in or else he would only be in more trouble. How do you like this? You take me to eat the specialties of your village and I will give you a big surprise in return. A surprise? I bet you'll love it, Tony swore. Tamari looked at him for a few seconds in silence. Okay, she agreed, but. If I don't like your surprise, I'll give you another one and it won't be pleasant at all. Understood? Sure, Tony shrugged without concern. His idea was infallible. After Tamari took Tony to the Kazakage's office and delivered Tsunade's scroll to the sibling pair, she left before Chio could consider using her poisons on him. How are your siblings? He asked as they ate desert fish. It turns out that the desert fish was actually a type of tuber that grows under the sand. Since its skin looks like fish scales, people gave it that name. The preparation method for it was to cut it into slices, cook them on hot stone plates and add some sauce. Kankuro has been studying his puppets, at this point it's like his habit Tamari said, not caring too much about having an informal chat he's always preferred to be with those pieces of wood than with real people. And Gara? He. Has changed, Tamari sighed. The encounter with Naruto has influenced him more than he expected, but it has been for the best. He no longer demands blood around and is opening up to people. I only hope that the people of the village can accept the change from him. Sure they will. Tony knew the story, he knew they would. Thank you Tamari felt better at the confidence imprisoned in Tony's answer and my surprise. Next, I still have to try that candy you said. When they both finished eating, Tamari looked at Tony somewhat shocked. How the hell did you manage to eat 20 plates of dessert? I was adopted by the Akimichi clan, draw your conclusions Tony replied with a smile but let's not talk about how incredible I am, how about we go for that surprise of yours? Do you need us to go somewhere? Tamari asked puzzled. I just need a large sand dune, any of the ones outside your village will do. By the way, do you have any storage scrolls with you? Tamari shook her head. Let's go get some, you'll need them, Tony assured. The food tasted better than expected and I was happy. After giving Tamari the surprise, she would look for somewhere to stay for the night. The next day, she would think about what to do to open her business in the village. Some minutes later. Tamari, Gara, Kankuro, and Tony were outside the village. 
It turns out that while Tony was accompanying Temari to look for the storage scrolls, they ran into Kankuro and after finding out that they were going to leave the village for who knows who, he decided to follow them so that nothing would happen to his sister. As for Gara, Tony didn't even realize he joined the group and he considered himself a sensonin. And good. Temari was looking at him as if she mistrusted him and was going to run away. He prepares the storage scrolls, Tony commented before stomping his foot on the base of the sand dune. The massive dune began to darken in color and swell, before all the sand disappeared and was replaced by firm, round chestnuts. The trio of brothers suddenly believed that they were in a genjutsu. The scent seemed so real. But it was impossible for several tons of chestnuts to appear out of thin air, so they made the release seal and looked again. No, the chestnuts were still there. If you keep standing like this, the chestnuts will roast from the heat of the sun and the sand, Tony commented amused. Wait, are they real? Temari asked unconsciously. Chestnuts were one of his favorite foods, while he couldn't stand things like octopus or squid. Unfortunately, chestnuts were too rare and stationary a commodity for the village and he could only eat them when he went out on missions in the surrounding territories during the right season. 100% authentic and yours, Tony commented generously. The energy expended for transforming the dune into chestnuts was covered by the food he had with Temari, so if it wasn't enough, he didn't mind transforming a dozen more dunes. As for why they were chestnuts, he simply remembered that according to the author, it was something that Temari liked. Is that how you turned my sand into sugar? Gara spoke suddenly. Don't tell me you're upset about that. Tony turned to Gara with his mouth open come on. It was a promotion exam, I wasn't going to let you beat me easily. I'm not upset, Gara replied, but how did you handle the sand after turning it into sugar? You shouldn't know the principle behind my style, she asked. After finishing the exam event, he realized that his clan's technique had been easily imitated and found it strange. You mean something like that? With another footfall, the sand around him turned gold and began to flow around him. Isn't that daddy's technique? Kankuro was stunned and couldn't help but ask. Gara's eyes were wide as was Temari, who stopped his movements to store the chestnuts. Before your minds get out of hand, let me clear this up, Tony commented. What I'm using is my own personal technique and nothing else. Impossible. Kankuro denied that is the technique of the golden sand. Correction it's the edible gold flake technique, Tony remarked. Then. They all looked at each other in bewilderment. If you pay attention, you'll see that although it looks like gold sand, it really isn't, Tony explained. Don't you know that there is a type of gold that is edible? It's just that it barely has a taste and it is also not something that contains nutrients for the proper functioning of the human body. So what's the point of using it? Chestnuts are better, he declared. As for why he could do what he did, it was because he knew the principle behind the technique. Infusing the chakra into the sand, one would not have to be a genius to think of something so simple. How much is this thing worth? Kankuro asked, thinking of the puppet-making tools he could get if he could sell all that gold. It can't be sold as gold itself. He discarded most of the transformation and I only keep a few grams in his hand. Take some, you can try it later if you want. Although like I said, it has almost no flavor. It's a meaningless luxury, he commented dismissively. So all your techniques have to do with food? Gara looked at him strangely sugar, chestnuts, edible gold everything is food. You got it right, Tony agreed, it's not like it was a problem to reveal a bit. In fact, I was thinking of opening a grocery store in your village. Do you think it is possible or should I give up? The three brothers exchanged glances. Honestly, with Kayasama calling the shots, your chance of opening a shop is close to zero, Kankuro commented as Tamari put the chestnuts back away and Gara examined the edible gold. Kanoha, so anything that could benefit someone from your village at the expense of ours is impossible to happen. And what about your brother? Asked Tony. Is it more objective? Ebizasama. Kankuro reflects it is possible. Although he will support his sister if she refuses, whether you start on his side is an entirely different matter. What kind of food will you sell us? Fresh seafood, meat, fruit, vegetables Tony listed the main sales of his business in short, a bit of everything. That being the case, you should really try to make an appointment with Ebizasama. Could you help me with that? No, Gara denied. 
He was still in his first changes and no one from the village would listen to him. I can't either, Tamari commented after approaching once he finished collecting all the chestnuts. Although the idea of increasing the variety of food in the village is great, I'm only a genin. I have no right to propose anything like that. I could, Kankuro commented to Tony's surprise. Does Kankuro have utility? Unheard. Sometimes I visited Kayasama to consult her about the puppets and I'm also a bit familiar with Ebizasama Kankuro continued without noticing Tony's strange look I can look for him and propose a meeting, but knowing him, it should be where he says. As long as he's in a public place and without his sister, I don't have a problem with the place. Kankuro nodded and the four returned to the sand village. Two days later. It's here. Tony looked at the restaurant somewhat strangely. With the usual food shortage in the village, did anyone dare to open a restaurant? Kankuro, who led him to the place, was able to read his thoughts due to his confused expression. It is the only full-fledged restaurant in the village and it usually only works when important visitors come. Ebizasama is waiting on the second floor. Tony nodded and entered the room. Over here please. What a scare. Tony clutched his chest as the ANBU equivalent of the arena suddenly appeared before him. Who the hell gets a guest like that? And maybe it was just his imagination, but Tony could swear he heard a smirk under the other party's mask. It shouldn't be right. In a room on the second floor. I didn't expect to see you again, let alone so soon under these circumstances, Ebizo commented with a dry expression. Well, he admitted I didn't either. Tony shrugged. So hen does the food arrive? Like it? Add to library. Tony left the restaurant with a sour expression after a long talk with Ebizo. Where by the way, no food was served. What manners? Did he manage to follow through with his plan to open a shop in a sand village? Yes. But it wasn't cheap. The talk started out pretty good, but when he revealed that he wouldn't hire anyone because he already had the employees and what the prices would be. Ebizo got pretty upset. In the end and for the good of the system's mission, he could only compromise and accept Ebizo's condition to pay half of the taxes to the village in the form of long-life food. But that made him pay an extra 21%. He knew the village was holding on to any additional gain no matter how small, but come on. If Tony really cared like a common shopkeeper, he would have given up on opening the store. The only positive part is that after yelling at each other for several minutes, he managed to get Ebizo to agree to sell the premises that he will use for his establishment, instead of limiting himself to a rented one. Tony was not willing that for some reason, while he was out of the sand village, the rent would go up, the shop would be closed down or inspected for no reason among other things. Although that made many places out of the question, he found one well located and large enough to meet his requirement, although it needed serious renovations. After inspecting the site, Tony imported some construction materials and hired a crew to remodel the site to his specifications. A basement that would act as a warehouse, shelves for the products, some rooms for his staff, etc. The works that originally would have taken two weeks were delayed to three months when Chio found out about the matter and complicated the administrative paperwork among other things. Now Tony didn't like Chio either, not one bit. But it wasn't all bad, after remembering that he had the Monster Hunter cold drink at his disposal, the heat was no longer a problem for him. He even thought of making the drink one of the flagship products of his new store. During the three months apart from inspecting the works and nobody doing anything strange, he spent the rest of the time training in the desert around the village. Tsunade made it clear that his strength was not meant to stagnate during his time away and he had no intention of disappointing her. Now, he didn't see Kankuro again during all this time. Gara helped him train and familiarize himself with the desert environment and he learned a lot from him. As for Tamari, he was in an excellent mood thanks to the chestnuts he gave her and which, according to his calculations, should last a few months without a problem. And let's not talk about when he asked out of curiosity about the cold drink when he saw Tony take a sip every few hours and discovered how effective it was. He generated a wave of envy in all his companions, because he no longer sweated a drop in the hottest hours. Should he try to sell the hot drink in the snow country? In fact, he found out that some ANBU from the arena secretly asked Tamari for some samples in hopes of deciphering the formula for the village. Most likely Chiyo's idea, that old hag. Heh, good luck with that. The silver lining was that over the last month, Tony had gotten used to the new terrain and his strength had grown. 
Tamari even joined the training along with Gara. Of course, Tony didn't reveal all his trump cards or all his strength, he focused on polishing basic concepts that he needed to improve like taijutsu and two knife fighting. Did they really think he wouldn't notice that he was being watched? It was better that they write down a level of strength lower than the real one. Less sense of threat to them, easier to catch them off guard if necessary in the future. The store opening was a resounding success. When people saw fresh meat and fruit instead of dried or preserved, they were overjoyed, let alone when they saw the fresh fish and shellfish section. Even Ebizo and Chio attended the opening. The sibling pair couldn't find a single fault to point to other than the prices, which Tony pretended not to hear. What a joke, did they expect him to use the same prices as in Kanoha? Ebizo managed to calm his sister down after much persuasion. When you said it was going to be a food store, I thought it was something else entirely, Gara commented as she examined the meat. Like everyone else who knew about the store's opening, she too believed that the food Tony mentioned was canned, dried, and the like. Not something so fresh and appetizing. I like to surprise people, Tony commented, not bothered by the misunderstanding. Anyway, now that the store is running smoothly, it's time for me to go. Are you going to leave? Tamari turned to look at him as she unknowingly sported a cream mustache on her face, courtesy of the glass provided by the shop's alchemy. I completed my mission here, tried the local food, and opened a business, Tony counted on his fingers. Something like this shouldn't have taken me more than a month, but there are always things that get in the way. Chio suddenly sneezed outside the store. Maybe you need some bodyguards back in Kanoha? Tamari found it a good excuse to leave the village and buy cheaper food in Kanoha for herself. No need, I've got a few more things to do on the way, Tony dismissed. He had kept his promise to Tsunade, reporting and returning to the village through the use of summons. Everything was fine and now she wanted to make her way to the capital of the Country of Fire before heading towards the other ninja villages. The Birth of the Gourmet Mob Task successfully establish cuckoo shop branches in all five major ninja villages and form your own underground organization. They will grant you money, influence and fame. Hidden Leaf Village completed. Hidden Sand Village completed. Hidden Cloud Village not completed. Hidden Rock Village not completed. Village Hidden in the Mist not completed. Optional task each land has its original dishes or characteristic ingredients, now it's time to make them your own. Discover as many local specialties as possible. Reward Devil Fruit Awakening Gourmet Judges 3-Pack Aqua Lagoon Salt 1-Piece Substantial and Comprehensive Increase in Host Strength. Optional Reward Chef Nianta Log Horizon. Depends on amount discovered. Due to the host's self-imposed restrictions, the time limit for carrying out this mission is 3 years. The following months were quite productive for Tony. He traveled to the capital of Fire and opened several chains of its stores without any problem, in fact, he was even invited by the daimyo to prepare some meals for him for a month, to which Tony could not refuse. But thanks to the great satisfaction of the daimyo and the fact that he knew that he could order whatever he wanted from the nearby shops, Tony got some facilities for his business and was also promoted to other nobles. The profits of the following days were exorbitant. If it weren't for Tony's insistence that she needed to continue his important mission, she suspected the daimyo would have tried to marry one of his daughters to him in order to keep him and his kitchen close to him. Even going against nature and getting her pregnant and giving birth on the same day. Just thinking about it gave him goosebumps. His next stop was the Mist Village and it was suspiciously easy. Meaning, he knew how dangerous the place was and sent a chocolate clone instead. But there were no ambushes, no sudden attacks, and nothing he expected. A few suspicious looks, a few curse words, but nothing more lethal. He arrived at the Mizukage's office, handed over the scroll, raised his request, filled out some paperwork, and in less than three hours he had a functional store in his hands that he opened that same afternoon. To be honest, he was a bit upset by how easy it was. He didn't know if the Mizukage under Abito's control really knew who he was and was acting on his orders or it was just his behavior to appear as if everything was running smoothly. In any case, he did not stay in the village a second longer than necessary after its inauguration. He had a feeling that doing so alone could be a big problem. After several days, he sighed with relief that nothing bad had happened and focused on his next destination, the Cloud Village. It was not as simple to enter the village as in the previous two, he had to go through a couple of mountain checkpoints, identify himself and say the reason for his visit. 
It was only after passing the checkpoints and being allowed through, that he entered the village. He looked around and realized that he stood out like a sore thumb in the spot. Leaving aside that most of the inhabitants of this village have dark skin, only his clothes betrayed his status as a foreigner. He also saw that many ninjas carried some kind of sword with them, which was normal since the village had many lightning and kenjutsu users. He wandered around a bit and soon located the Reikich's office, which was on the highest mountain in the village. In fact, he didn't see it before because there were some clouds that were covering it. Perhaps they had some complex that they needed to compensate. After declaring his intention at the reception, he was led to a room to wait. It didn't take long for him to have company, but it wasn't the Reikich who came to meet him, it was Samui. Tony remembered the Kunoichi, she was one of the few fair-skinned people with blonde hair in the village. She was also a confidant of the Reikich and had a calculating personality, so he didn't have to worry about him making impulsive decisions. Chio sneezed at that very moment in Sunagakure. Welcome to Kumogakure, Samui spoke as he took a seat and looked at Tony, my name is Samui and I will act on behalf of Raikajesima. He is currently very busy and can't receive anyone, I hope you can understand. Of course, I appreciate Miss Samui taking a moment to see me, Tony agreed with a smile. He returned the courtesy with courtesy, he didn't really expect a mere Chunin messenger to be received by the Rakage and personally, he didn't want to deal with him either. Who would like to talk to a brawny, brawny man who doesn't usually wear a shirt even in his office? Tony was a man of culture, he preferred to talk to someone like Samui. Have I been informed that you have a scroll from the Hokage? Samui asked, getting straight to the point. Actually, Tony took out the scroll and handed it to Samui, I'd also like to discuss a small matter if possible. What is it about? Samui put the scroll away without even looking at it. It was something meant for the rakage and she had no reason to overstep her authority. My name is Tony Akimichi and I would like to apply for a permit to open a business in your village, more specifically, a food business. Tony Akimichi. Samui reflects for a moment before remembering the information associated with that name I see, in fact, I am a little informed about your business. I have also tried your food once in the past. Tony nodded. In fact, as someone close to the rakage, she should know something since he was the one who prepared the food for the Chunin exam. But Samui's next words were a bit abrupt. Tell me, would you like to leave Kanoha and join Kumogakure? Samui asked. Tony was a bit speechless, it wasn't even hiding his intention to dig him out of Kanoha. And Samui, seeing Tony's sudden stiffness, continued in a calm tone. I've done a little research on it. You were not born in Kanoha, you were only adopted by the Akimichi clan later when your village was destroyed by deserters. You were the valedictorian of your class at the Ninja Academy and from an early age you demonstrated great culinary talent. Your ninja style is indeed creative and very difficult to replicate, so you may have some special bloodline. You're not bad at kenjutsu either. You were assigned to a team that failed to measure up to you after graduation, and you were one of the few genin who managed to pass the chunin exam. At the same time, you founded the cuckoo store and your business has been booming Samui analyzed from my point of view, you are a great talent and your village has not given you the support you deserve at any time. In fact, there were even people who actually had detrimental plans for you. Why don't you go then? If you agree to join Kumogakure, I can assure you that the village will actively support you where Kanoha did not. We can provide you with jutsus, training in secret kenjutsu styles, some laboratories for your study of food and it is also not impossible to give you some land and women to found your own clan in the village. Even I would be tempted to join that initiative. Tony was a bit overwhelmed and was silent for a few minutes. Samui was also in no rush and waited patiently for his response. I'll be honest, it's actually a very tempting offer, Tony replied with a sigh as he rubbed his neck, if it had been before the Chunin exam, there's a good chance I would have accepted your proposal. But since you've done your research, you should also know why I won't accept. Samui nodded in understanding. In fact, the offer he made to Tony was more of a blind shot. If she had accepted, it would have been great, but she was almost certain of rejection. According to her information, Tony adopted a girl from the Uzumaki clan as a little sister during the Chunin exam who later became a disciple of one of the three Sanin, Tsunade, the current Hokage. That one point alone made recruiting Tony nearly impossible. But if successful, they would have gotten a talented ninja with a good business and possibly the girl from the Uzumaki clan would have entered the village as well. 
she was a true two for one. Although I'm sorry to hear your answer, keep in mind that the offer is still valid in case you change your mind, Samley commented. Given how treacherous Kanoha was, he believed that there was still a remote possibility in the future in any case, we will be happy if you decide to open a branch of your business in the village. Me and some of my classmates who visited Kanoha during the exam have missed your food he smiled let's talk about the conditions. Right now, Tony was in a Kumogakure training ground fighting a man using only Kenjutsu. After a couple of hours of fighting, they stopped in unison to rest. Thank you for the lesson, Atsuasen, Tony thanked. Don't worry, I'm just doing my part, Samui's brother replied as he tried to regulate his breathing. Although Tony declined Kumogakure's offer, they remained relatively cordial with him looking forward to the possibility of a change of sides in the future. Since he would need to spend some time in the village, Tony issued a mission to Kumogakure to find someone to practice Kenjutsu on. The fact that the person who will take the mission was Samui's brother, he doesn't know for sure if it was coincidence or a deliberate arrangement. Be that as it may, the training was useful. A small voice in his head sometimes wondered why not bring Samui to Kanoha under the pretense of a marriage union between two villages, as a show of trust, but the common sense within him ruled out the idea because of the amount of inconvenience. It overwhelmed any kind of profit which was already low enough. For starters, would the rakage agree? No, and he didn't want to anger him in his own village. And even though Samui was quite the beauty among known Kunoichi, his loyalty was undoubtedly strongly tied to Kumogakure. Not to mention that they had only met once. Sometimes beauty wasn't everything. Let's say the rakage reluctantly agrees and Samui comes to Kanoha under the deal, he'll be under constant ANBU surveillance and Tony won't feel comfortable. Not to mention how his sister, Tsunade, and the rest would react. More importantly, what would Taiyuya think? Wait, why am I suddenly focused on her? Do you hear me? Atsui's voice snapped Tony out of his musings. Sorry, I was thinking about something. What were you saying? Tony asked. I heard from my sister that your food is very good. I know you haven't opened your business yet, but I have some friends who are interested in trying it out and their curiosity is killing them. Would it be possible to fix something? Friends? Sure, it's not a problem Tony agreed, he didn't mind cooking and he was starting to get hungry we still have time before it's time to eat, I can prepare something while you go looking for them if you want. They are many. Really? Cool. Atsui smiled there will only be five of us, me, my sister and three friends. Okay, any preferences? Oh no, we're already asking a lot of you, just do what you want Atsui shook his head don't worry, we're not picky. In the rakage's office. These are the latest documents, please sign them, Rika Jessima. Is there still more? The rakage complained, annoyed as hell. Remember me, why do I have a council if they don't do any administrative work? That's because Samui interrupted his response when he received a mental message Rika Jessima, Atsui managed to fulfill his purpose. Well, that's it. The rakage stood up and walked out of the office, quickly moving away from the endless papers called B in Yujito. I'm going to let them try the food they've been pestering for months without stopping. Remind them to change their appearances. I don't want that brat to know that our Jinchurikis are the ones who are going to eat. Rika Jessima, you too must change your appearance, Samui reminded him. Oh, I almost forgot. Half an hour later. Welcome. Tony received Atsui, Samui, and the three friends of the brothers. Two men and a woman I hope you're hungry. You can count on that, you silly idiot. Behave well. Samui looked at the transformed killer bee with narrowed eyes. Forgiveness. Tony's expression remained a hearty smile, but on the inside he was laughing non-stop as he recognized B from his constant tendencies to rap. He didn't even alter his voice. Following that logic, the woman should be Yujito Ni while the remaining man should be some high-ranking Kumogakure official. He didn't remember much of the higher-ups of this village, but he was sure that he couldn't be the rakage. With his personality, it was most likely that he would present himself as his true self, striking Jojo poses and demanding to cook him something to eat with a commanding tone. Knowing that there would be six of us in total, I prepared a total of five cloches for all of you, Tony explained as he pointed to five plates covered by stainless steel bells. Since Atsui has said that you are not picky eaters, each dish has a different style. Next, I will randomly distribute them and present them to you. 
he distributed the cloches and began by lifting the one from Samui. For Samwazen, he has touched the tropical style Tony introduced all the dishes are made up of fruits of different textures and flavors. Very suitable for healthy skin and keeping the body hydrated. Then, he kept uncovering the rest one by one. For its suisen, the barbecue style. Smoked beef that melts in the mouth accompanied by a thick sauce. For the lady, Tony said as he uncovered Yujito's plate, the white style. Rice pudding, fresh cheese with apple honey, whipped cream with real sugar. For the gentleman, Tony said as he uncovered the rakage plate, the brave style. Chili pepper burrito, spicy maple tofu, Sichuan stew. And lastly, Tony said as he uncovered Killer Bee's plate, the maritime style. Squid rings, takoyaki, Galician octopus. Everyone was impressed by the variety of foods and began to eat with delight. Well, except for the rakage and Killer Bee. The rakage was sweating as he stared at all the red on his plate, burning his eyes and nostrils just from the smell. But the brave style was so appropriate for him. As for Killer Bee, he didn't have a problem with food, but. Well, someone else seemed to have a lot to say. And they weren't pretty words. Have some idea about my story? Comment it and let me know. Three years have passed since Tony set out on his journey to expand his business in the other villages. After spending time in Kumogakure receiving more visits from Atsui's friends, he visited Iwagakure where they also tried to recruit him. But Anoki was a bit desperate since unlike other villages they didn't have anything remarkable apart from his infrastructure talent, so he offered his granddaughter, Kuratsuchi, as bait. Yes, one of the only three women who would become a Kage in the story apart from Tsunade and Meitarumi. But Tony was not fooled, Anoki was much more direct and could guess that he alone was behind the huge amount of money generated by the Kuka store. Also, Tony didn't like Kuratsuchi's character. She wasn't as attractive as Samui and her personality was childish and proud, so she tactfully declined. Anoki's granddaughter was furious to be offered like this by her grandfather, but she was even more furious to be rejected on the spot without a doubt. Tony did not understand that she was going through his head. Unfortunately, Kuratsuchi is also a spiteful person and she made the process of opening her business in Iwagakure very difficult. Maybe in Sunagakure she had to wait three months because of Chio, but here it was almost two years of back and forth. Tony just gritted his teeth and persisted for the system mission. Even Anoki knew that his granddaughter was going too far with this matter. Although he was secretly proud that he inherited his stubbornness, seeing Tony's attitude change over time, he had to intervene for fear that Tony would have an outburst and do something drastic to his granddaughter. Especially since that day. Tony once invited them to eat to try to make up and his granddaughter sneeringly dumped the plate of food on the floor, criticizing it for being unappetizing. It was only a split second, but Anoki would swear that he felt a tremendous killing intent focused on Kuratsuchi. A tyrannical and bestial bloodlust. If it weren't for his decades-long instincts and experiences, he might not have noticed it. He hastened to say goodbye to him saying that he had forgotten an important matter and dragged his granddaughter with him away from Tony. What Anoki didn't know was that he saved his granddaughter's life at the time, because even the affable gourmet demon in Tony felt that Kuratsuchi had gone too far by throwing her food away. Tony needed to focus on actively calming down so he wouldn't attack. In short, the business managed to open after a lot of effort and the prices were the most expensive of all the ninja villages. Five times more expensive to be precise. And if they have any complaints about it, let them talk to Anoki's granddaughter. Besides, Tony had no plans to ever return to Iwagakure. Thanks to Kuratsuchi and the people supporting her to make things difficult for him, he came to really loathe the village and its inhabitants. And to think that when he came to this world, he was hesitating between Kanoha and this place. At least his efforts were worth it. He has completed the mission successfully. The rewards are being delivered. Devil Fruit Awakening 3 Gourmet Judges Pack Aqua Lagoon Salt 1 Piece Substantial and Comprehensive Increase in Host Strength. The host has fulfilled the conditions of the optional quest. The rewards are being delivered. Chef Nianta Log Horizon. Depends on amount discovered. The host has discovered a total of 64 culinary specialties on his journey. Summoning Contract Chocobo. Thanks to the quest rewards, Tony's strength underwent a complete jump and he was sure that he had long exceeded the requirements to be a jonin. He may even have reached the threshold of a kage. 
the increase in strength aside, just the awakening of the devil fruit was quite terrifying. If before he had the ability to turn inert things into food, now he could not only turn living things into sweets against his will, but by devouring them he could obtain a series of benefits for it. If, for example, he turned a ninja into a sweet and ate it, he would get an improvement in his chakra reserves, an increase in physical attributes, the possibility of learning the jutsus that ninja mastered, etc. In other words, his awakening mode was similar to a mix between the evil version of Android 21 from Dragon Ball and Tomoki Kanata's ability from Remonster. Now, Tony never agreed to eat this kind of food. But, if people like Madara, Abido, and the like were transformed into food and he could get strength from him. What's more, a huge question arose could he transform Kagaya Atsutsuki into a sweet? And if so, would eating it result in her getting all the power from him? Note to self, try to eat Kagaya when the time comes. For the good of this world. Wait. What if you will try to do that with the Jubi? Um, mm, but then the Biju. The pack of three gourmet judges turned out to be a way to summon three character ghosts that could act as judges in a contest or cooking competition. They were composed of Nakiri Arena, the tongue of God that finds the smallest flaws. The Harlequin, the judge who explains the benefits of each dish and transforms. Toriko, the gluttonous heavenly king who makes sure to eat everything without leaving anything behind. Then when he found out that he got the contract from the Chocobos, he freaked out. Yes, he was able to summon the most adorable, soft, adorable and strong version. They were not those fat or strange chocobos, but the best of the best. As soon as Karen saw them, he begged to share the summoning contract with her. Tony was unable to refuse, so now his little sister can use the alchemy and the chocobo. And speaking of Karen, he managed to graduate with honors along with Sakura from Tsunade's medical ninjutsu. He even learned the fighting style from him to clean punch and the seal on the forehead. It's just that instead of just trying to copy her sensei's style like a certain pink-haired person did, Karen created her own style and also learned some wind and water techniques, which were her affinities discovered after passing the test. Of the chakra paper. She also had additional experience crafting poisons and antidotes thanks to Anko. As for Fuinjutsu, she also learned part of the Uzumaki heritage that had been preserved in the village thanks to her sensei. Anko mastered the use of the curse seal and the two transformations of her. The first phase causes black lines in round patterns to emerge on its body, while the second phase darkens its skin and prominent features it displays are huge fangs in its mouth like a saber-toothed tiger, hard scales on its arms and a tail also scaled that is divided in two. Her only complaint is that when she comes out of her transformation, the way her teeth and tail shrink from her feels really weird to her. Taiyuya has changed a bit in this time. She has managed to meet a few more people in the village and is no longer under constant surveillance. Although her tough attitude is still there, she is calmer with Karen, Shizun and company. Her body has been slimmed down and both Shizun and Karen seem to be a bit envious for some reason. Taiyuya now wears chain mail like Anko, but instead of an open trench coat, she wears a purple kimono which makes her look more elegant and always wears black lipstick. Her hair is still somewhat wild, but it is much neater as it is gathered in three braids that fall down her back to her waist and end with a spiky accessory. As I understand it, these accessories are not really there to attack, but to cause a certain frequency of sound through a special technique of oscillating movement that induces the enemy in a genjutsu in a discreet way. Oh, I also realized my feelings during these years and found out that I fell in love with Taiyuya at some point. I guess my appreciation for the character changed now that I was dealing with the person in the flesh, not to mention the hormones in my body did the job for him. I had a vague feeling that it wasn't something one-sided, so one day when I returned to Kanoha to report after finally finishing business in Iwagakure, I decided to jump into the pool and confess. The result was a punch, followed by a hug, then he shook me like a rag, and finally I left my house with black smeared lips and a smile. It's official, Taiyuya and I have become a couple. The Akimichi clan was stunned when he found out, I think they were under the impression that if he ever found a mate, it would be within his clan. What can I say, love is not something that one can plan. Did he leave me anything else? Oh I got it. Tsunade became very happy just a few days ago and the reason is none other than my coming of age. According to his last medical examination, he is sure that I, Karen and Taiyuya have already turned 18 despite not knowing our dates of birth. And why did Tsunade care about that? 
because the system finally gave me access to alcoholic beverages. Fire whiskey, butter beer, etc. All the drinks that I promised him when he welcomed Karen as his disciple were finally able to go down his throat after years of waiting. In fact, when I told him the drinks were ready, he thought she was kidding him. Didn't believe me in the slightest. Only after taking out the bottles that I prepared beforehand, he started laughing as if he had lost his mind, hugging the drink in his arms. Still, to my complete surprise, I don't take a single sip. He waited until after the Jonin test, when I passed without a problem, to start drinking in celebration. System, show me my status, Tony thought after realizing that he hadn't verified his changes in years. He was now at home and was curious to see what he said. Condition. Name Gluttony, nicknamed Tony. Current World Naruto. Ability Devil Fruit Cuckoo Cuckoo No Me No Weakness and's Breath Transform Tomatoes into Magma Turkeys Alive Dolls Modified Technique Pearl Jam Jojo. Weapons Twin Blades of the Dragon King De Rouse. Traits Gourmet Cells Awakened Gourmet Demon Gluttony Homunculus. Summoning Contract Chimera Ants Alchemy Forest of Gluttony Ryuchi Cave Chocobo. Couple Tayuya. Description A powerful and wealthy Jonin from Kanoha who has touched the threshold of strength belonging to Akage. Known throughout the five great ninja villages and beyond for his chain of cuckoo stores, his strange gourmet ninja techniques, and his personal connections. He possesses an awakened gourmet demon. He has the mysterious ability to transform things into food and can temporarily sublimate said ability to transform living things and become stronger by devouring them. His romantic partner is Taiyuya, whom he loves madly. System, is it necessary to add that? Tony commented wordlessly when he saw the new section called Couple and the description. The host is not satisfied with his status update. Forget it, you've bothered to add it. I'd be wrong to ask you to remove it Tony denied while he was unable to hide a smile. Ding. The host has accomplished a hidden achievement. Hidden achievement dog food. Condition the host has found a romantic partner and is showing it off to the system. How cheeky. Hidden reward battle wolf pup son of Guinness. System. Do you want the Inazuka clan to assault me? Tony asked scared. He decided to ignore the name of the hidden achievement and the description of it, focusing on the reward. The host should not worry. The battle wolf is completely loyal to the host and partly loyal to its mate. He will grow rapidly by feeding him high-level food. On the other hand, the host must remember that the battle wolf will refuse to eat anything that is not provided by the host itself. There is no food in this world that can meet the requirements of the battle wolf naturally, not even the sages of the three places have the qualifications to be eaten by it. They are not worthy. Is he really the son of Guinness? The wolf king himself from Area 2. The one with a capture level of 6090. The host must remember that he is a newborn cub. Despite having more potential than Terry, he will need time to eat and grow. Due to his ancestry, the host will need to teach him almost nothing when it comes to fighting. You know system, it would have been great to get the pup before he passes the three-year period, Tony commented annoyed. The system is not to blame for the host being so dense on this topic. According to the shared average of other systems, their hosts have already assembled a harem of at least five members or more in a similar period of time. Shut up and get the puppy out. The system's comment annoyed Tony greatly. He was dense. Silly stuff. Also, he wasn't one of those protagonists who would be indulged to his wishes and protected by plot armor just for going to another world. He had it very clear since Kabuto stabbed him and Tsunade had to save his life. This was real and he wouldn't take the feelings of the people he cares about lightly. A flash of light suddenly shone into the living room and an illusory figure appeared in front of Tony, becoming embodied by moments until it became real and gently descended to the floor. So this is the battle wolf. What name should I give it? Tony examined the new companion with his interest as he raised one of the paws you're a man, huh? I'll call you Fenrir in that case. The cub was shadow dark fur, which was unusual for a battle wolf since they're usually white, but being who his father is, it's understandable. He has two blue lines under his eyes and a shaggy mane that was just starting to come out. He wasn't small at all, as he was the same size as a normal adult wolf. Perhaps the movement of his leg woke him up. He opened his eyes that are black in color with pink pupils and looked around him as he trembled. 
His attention was quickly drawn to Tony as he caught his scent and licked his hand. Hey, happy to meet you mate. Tony immediately felt the connection. Are you hungry? Fenrir answered him with a bark of affirmation. After all, battle wolves are highly intelligent creatures and can even understand humans and read the emotions of others. Later, when Karen returned from buying some household supplies like toothpaste and toilet paper, she found a dark wolf in the living room that she was happily eating a table-sized piece of meat. Wait a second where did the table they had go? When the wolf suddenly stopped eating and turned to look at her with her pink eyes, Karen froze like a deer in car headlights. After sniffing in her direction, Fenrir ignored Karen as he caught Tony's scent on her. So he assumed he was part of the pack. Onikane. Karen yelled after she was able to move again. Tony came rushing in when he heard his little sister's scream. What's going on Karen? She, she asked him, are we under attack? You're hurt. Then she came up with something even worse has Enko Sensei tried cooking again. We have to run. Why is there a wolf in our house? Oh, that was it Tony sighed in relief he's a new member of the family. You can think of it like he was my partner if he was born into the Inazuka clan. Although he is still a newborn so be careful not to scare him. Karen looked at the full-grown wolf that continued to tear at the meat with gusto. Was that a newborn? Esichi had to be careful not to scare him. How much will it grow? Karen asked suddenly worried. This Tony didn't know what to say. According to the system, cubs fed high-level food could quickly grow up to three meters in height. But the battle wolf goes through several growth spurts and can easily reach 50 meters in height. In other words, when Fenrir was an adult, he would be titanic in stature. And if one takes into account that the nine-tailed fox is only about a hundred feet tall in comparison. Anyway, it's something I should solve in the future. While Tony was thinking about what to answer, he heard Taiyuya coming up. Where did this wolf come from? Her, she asked, more puzzled than scared. When someone lives with Tony that long, he gets used to the oddity showing up from time to time. Last time, a sculpture of a giraffe made out of cookies was found. Fenrir examined the newcomer and immediately understood her identity with the smell, she was Tony's partner, the queen of the pack. Her scent was much stronger than the other humans, which evidenced the difference in status. He greeted her cheerfully by handing her a piece of the meat she was eating at her feet and returned to her feast. I like this wolf, Taiyuya commented with a smile as she reached over and petted Fenrir. Karen felt a pang of jealousy at the difference in treatment. Because he gave Taiyuya meat from her and ignored her. And suddenly, he thought of something terrifying. And she tries to eat his adorable chocobos. I've returned Kanoha. Was heard throughout the village. Damn, peace is over, Tony sighed as he stroked Fenrir. In a few days a request will arrive from Sunagakir that will make Naruto and company go to rescue Gara who has become the new Kazakage and will be kidnapped by Deidara and Sasori of Akatsuki. Too bad I won't see his expression when he finds out that he's still the only genin. After all, the rest have already ascended to Chunin in this time while me and Niji are jonin. I mean, even Kankuro has become a jonin. Tony was sure that old hag Chio had a hand in the test and tampered with the results. The question is will they involve me in the rescue? He was familiar with Gara and Tamari from his visits. Tony's shops and his food made the relationship between Sunagakir and Kanoha better than in the original timeline. Even Tsunade suggested that she will lower the prices in Sunagakir a bit. And not having a danzo behind the scenes was definitely a huge bonus. But then again, Naruto should leave with Sakura and Kakashi if memory serves him right, only to be joined later by Guy's team. There were no other teams on the Kazakage's rescue mission, which was weird when you think about it. Perhaps it was because of the difference in the quality of the forces, but some support teams should have followed Naruto and the rest. So Tony wasn't sure if he could avoid facing Akatsuki or not. For one thing, if he avoided him he might manage to avoid attracting Zetsu and Abido's attention. He wouldn't have to see Chio or attend her funeral when he revives Gara. He could stay in the village and let the plot do its thing while he and the others got stronger. Furthermore, Fenrir still hadn't had a single fight yet. On the other hand, facing them was an opportunity to try and get in touch with Itachi and see if he could convince him to eat a bowl of pearl jam to cure his illness, which might come in handy later. At the same time, he could deliver accidentally discovered information about Payne's attack plan, which should happen after Jiraiya's death. 
a death that Tony still doubted if he tried to avoid. Although it would be a devastating blow and necessary for Naruto to take Senjutsu training seriously, his concern is with Tsunade, who will take the brunt of it. Tony had grown very close to Shizun and Tsunade in these three years, it's likely that even Naruto doesn't have as much trust in them as they do in Tony. He even he could tell that both women were part of his family by how often they stopped by his house, either to eat or to teach Karen. But Jiraiya had made too many mistakes and his presence could twist the development of many things, especially his ideology and attitude towards certain issues. And let's not talk about the old toad who manipulates him as if he were in the palm of his hand with dreams and prophecies. Perhaps if I get Tsunade to not bet on his return, that will be enough. Fenra noticed that Tony stopped stroking him and complained playfully biting into his hand. Okay, let's stretch our muscles a bit, Tony told him. Be that as it may, I would know soon. Now, his priority is to make Fenrir awaken his terrifying combat instincts. He tried to arrange some training battle with the Inazuka clan, but the ninja dogs simply didn't dare to attack Fenrir due to the lifeform suppression. They were completely frozen. The scandal that the Inazuka clan put together for that reason was a headache. They even featured some females for Fenrir to have cubs. Depraved. Fenrir was barely days old and even if he was an adult, the Inazuka ninja dogs would be unable to take Fenrir due to the disparity in size. He adds the fact that Fenrir disdained such pairings, there were simply no chances. But do you know what followed? The Inazuka clan asked Tony if he was interested in any clan girl to marry. They were even about to send someone to the Akimichi clan to make an arrangement. It turned out that there were several Inazuka girls interested in Tony and as long as he defeated them in a serious battle, they would be happy to pair up with him. They would get a life partner with whom they would have strong and manly offspring in addition to Fenrir, a potential stud for their ninja dogs. Tony didn't understand people's obsession over the years with offering him a marriage. Was it really that good of a match? The thing escalated to such an extent that he had to ask for help from Tsunade, who trying not to laugh, agreed to bail Tony out in exchange for some bottles of fire whiskey. Tony directly handed him a barrel. Perhaps it was due to some gossipy people, but Taiyuya found out what happened and sought out Tony to reaffirm their relationship in such a way that Karen suddenly became aware of how thin the walls of her house were and became unable to look. Tony for a few days, much to the complete bewilderment of the other party. Maybe she was on those days of the month. And why was Fenrir looking at him with admiration? Several days later. Tony was preparing the meal when an ANBU suddenly appeared in the kitchen and before he could speak, the ANBU felt fangs just inches from his neck. He didn't dare move a single muscle, because his instinct screamed that if he did, he was dead. Okay Fenrir, he's a guest, Tony said without turning his gaze. Inwardly he was very pleased with the battle wolf's reaction to the sudden intrusion into his territory what's wrong. Sensing that his teeth receded and there was no danger, the ANBU subconsciously sighed in relief before delivering the message he had been ordered to. The Hokage has called you to his office, it's urgent. The door to the Hokage's office was knocked twice before it opened and Tony walked in as if he were in his own home. Did you call me Tsunade? He he asked before looking at the people present Hey Naruto. When did you come back? Hello Tony, how long? Naruto answered with his characteristic smile are you also a chunin? He asked with hope in his eyes. With those food businesses, Tony shouldn't have changed that much since then, right? Jonin. Oh, come on. Naruto dropped his arms as he lamented that he was the only genin of his generation. Hello Kakashi. Sakura, you look good today Tony greeted when he saw the pink-haired girl new gloves. Tsunade coughed to get the meeting back on track. Tony, we have received a note from Sunagakir officially requesting our assistance. His Kazakage has been kidnapped by an organization known as the Akatsuki. And you called me because. We have to save Gara. Naruto interrupted. Naruto. Tsunade silenced Naruto with a look. I initially wanted to send Naruto, Kakashi and Sakura, but since it's important that they get out as soon as possible and every second counts, I want you to go with them to provide the necessary subsistence supplies. Tony blinked twice at the reason. Come on, you want me to prepare the food, Tony summarized. That's not all, Tsunade quickly hinted, if it was just the food, they could use your ninja grocery scrolls. The additional reason is that Karen told me that you have a new pet and I thought it might be useful to keep track of her. 
Tony blinked again. Didn't Kakashi have a ninja dog summon? Again, what's the point of him going? Tsunade there was something he wasn't telling her. You have a pet? Sakura asked suddenly. She stopped by Tony's house a few times while she talked to Karen about medical ninjutsu lessons and she never saw a pet. She knew he had some weird summons, but nothing beyond. Fenrir, introduce yourself. Two eyes revealed themselves from Tony's shadow and a two-meter tall dark wolf stepped out of it and loomed over the Hokage's office with a domineering gaze. It's bigger than he expected, Sakura commented. I think Pakan would be a little intimidated, Kakashi muttered. He's the biggest dog I've ever seen in my life. Naruto yelled before a paw lunged at him and slammed him into the wall. Fenrir is a wolf, Naruto, he doesn't like to be confused. Tsunade and the rest were shocked, including the hidden ANBU. How come no one noticed the existence of such a beast? Tony was laughing non-stop on the inside. This is an ability that comes from the Guinness lineage and the rest of the battle wolves don't have it, awakened this morning. The ability to hide in the shadows. Now, what is the real reason Tsunade? Tony asked as Sakura tried to pull Naruto off the wall and Fenrir returned to his shadow. Tsunade sighed. This is an emergency, and I can't waste time selecting personnel from among all the ninjas in the village. That is why I order you, as Hokage, to accompany Kakashi's team and provide support when necessary. Karen will also accompany you. And the rest of my team? Anko and Tayuya are on a mission outside the village and they won't be back anytime soon, we can't afford to wait. You leave the village in 15 minutes. Okay Tony couldn't refuse even if he wanted to, Tsunade made it clear that this was an order as Hokage, not a request. M.M. Tsunade nodded satisfied Sakura and Naruto can go get ready, the meeting point will be at the entrance of the village. Kakashi and Tony, stay a moment longer. Only after Sakura and Naruto had said their goodbyes and were left alone in the office did Tsunade speak again. I have an additional mission for both of you, she explained with a more serious expression. Although the leader responsible for rescuing Gara will be Kakashi, I'll need you to collaborate with Tony to fulfill his. This is an A-rank mission. Is it about Akatsuki? Kakashi asked. Yes. Although it will seem that Tony will accompany you because of his peculiar abilities and as support, his true mission will be to gather information from Akatsuki Incognito. Gara's kidnappers are likely to take him to one of his bases, so in case there's a conflict there, I want Tony to sneak out and try to find what he can at the first opportunity. He got to dig a lot of things out of Danzo and I think he can do something similar again. So I need to cover it in case Naruto or Sakura suspect something, I got it, Kakashi stated. Why do you tell us about this separately? Tony asked. Let's just say, the best thing for everyone is for Naruto to interact as little as possible with Akatsuki. In fact, if he had not been present when I received the request for help, he would not let him join the rescue nor would he find out about it until later. It makes sense, Naruto being what he is, he would try to escape on his own to save Gara. It's better to have him participate, but watch him. Okay, I'll do what I can, Tony nodded. Do you know where my little sister is? She is in my laboratory, you already know the way. Sure, Kakashi and Tony left the office, before remembering something and sticking their heads out, by the way, tell the ANBU to knock on the door next time. Who knows what would have happened if he wasn't present when they entered the house and found Fenrir alone. Tony disappeared behind the door, leaving Tsunade completely bewildered. Does anyone know what she's talking about? The ANBU on the roof broke out in a cold sweat. Tony found Karen in Tsunade's lab studying something through a microscope. After informing him of the urgent mission, they both went to her house to prepare the necessary things, he left a note for when Taiyuya returned and they met the Kakashi team at the entrance of the village. Tony watched as Jiraiya whispered something to Tsunade, who came to see them off as the clones continued to work on the office documents, most likely related to Akatsuki, before they left the village. As Tony and company jumped through the branches, a familiar sound rang in his head. Ding! A new quest has been spawned aggressive marketing. Task the Akatsuki organization is beginning to implement their plan to collect all the bijus and this time, they have kidnapped the new Kazakage who also happens to be the Jinchuriki of the one-tailed beast. Your mission is to get Gara back and return to Sunagake you're alive. It will be a great advertisement for your business. Retrieve Gara's lifeless body not completed. 
Chio must not die before transferring her life if he dies, the mission is considered failed. Get information from Akatsuki completed. Optional task Karen must obtain the main merit of removing the poison that threatens Kankuro. Nobody wants to see Tamari cry, right? Reward the host can exchange the interdimensional travel ticket single-use item for an interdimensional summoning ticket single-use item. Optional reward new defensive gourmet ninja technique. Note the information that the host decides to provide to Tsunade after his return can have a major effect on the course of events compared to the original outcome. Tony raised an eyebrow when he read the details of the mission. He hadn't really thought about how good it would be for his business to be able to say that he rescued Akage, the acceptance of the people of Sunagakir would skyrocket when it was made public. As for getting information from Akatsuki, since he had watched the series, he naturally knew of its core members, their original plans, and their real hands behind the scenes. As for the volume of information that he would reveal, he would consider it during the mission. What he currently had him confused about was the optional task. Since when did he have to depend on others to fulfill the tasks of the system? As if he could have interpreted his expression, a screen appeared in front of Tony. The system supports the host in the best way it deems possible within its limitations. After a long series of calculations, he has determined that helping the host's closest and most trusted people to some extent can benefit him in the long run. However, the system cannot take the initiative to provide help beyond assigning optional tasks once a mission is generated. This action has been approved by Rob. Tony roughly understood the explanation. The system created an optional task that should not exist with the generated quest, to include Karen. Since she's part of the compliance conditions, the system can act a bit inside that loophole with Rob's permission, as that only affects a select few people. At the same time, if the optional task is unsuccessful, then it does not affect the main quest. But how would the system help Karen? This time the system did not respond and Tony scanned the mission several times before noticing the in the optional task reward. It's possible that whatever could help Karen is that, since the gourmet ninja technique is something that was meant for him. Perhaps spending more time than expected in his thoughts, the team of five met up with Tamari who was on her way back to Sunagakir. Gara has been kidnapped. Tamari paled at the news and suddenly thought of the glass of tea that he cracked when he was resting. It really was a bad sign. Tony, take us to Sunagakir, quickly. Tamari turned to look at Tony nervously. Tamari was much more familiar with Tony than the rest of Team Kakashi and she knew that Tony had very fast ways of moving between Sunagakir and Kanoha. It's just that she never went into details and they trusted him. But this was an emergency. When Tony heard Tamari's words, she hit her forehead with the palm of her hand. He was so focused on reading the details of the mission that she completely forgot about it. What are you talking about, Tony? Kakashi interrupted, confused by Tamari's statement. They had been running and jumping for hours. I'll explain later, Tony replied with a wave of his hand. He needed you guys to get closer to me a bit, he said. Tamari went to her side as did Karen and the Kakashi team looked at each other in confusion, but they ignored her. Tony put a hand on the ground and with a burst of smoke, they all disappeared from the woods. By the time the smoke cleared, they were all in a room that was dark but had a subtle sweet scent in the air. Tony opened a side door and they left the place, to find themselves inside one of Sunagakir's cuckoo stores. What has happened? Sakura and Naruto were puzzled. Karen knew what happened and Tamari was too worried, so only Kakashi understood what happened. Was it the reverse summoning technique? But the five big villages had a barrier to prevent this kind of thing, like Tony did. If Tony knew Kakashi's thoughts, she would mock him. Just thinking about the number of summons that occurred within a village in the series without any impediment, showed how flawed the barrier was in that regard. The barrier was more for detecting if someone was going in or out than anything else. Only if the barrier belonged to Yuzushiogakure, where the Uzumaki clan was in the past, he believed that it would be truly effective. Besides, his summons came from the Almighty System, what barrier was there in the world that could block them? Tamari quickly left the shop with everyone following her and after talking to a patrol, they were guided to the Sunagakure Hospital, where Kenkuro was currently being poisoned by Sasori of the Red Sand and was accompanied by the elderly brother duo. Kenkuro Tamari looked worriedly at her brother who had all the makeup on her face ruined by the fight and the sweat. It's a new type of poison explained one of the doctors with a dark expression will need time to analyze it, 
but Kankarosama doesn't have that much time. Tony and Karen were at the back of the group, so no one noticed when Tony passed a small piece of paper to Karen with something written on it, which after reading it, she destroyed with chakra. Before Sakura could leave, Karen stepped forward and began to quickly examine Kankuro. The doctors wanted to stop her, but when she saw her movements, they understood that she was a colleague from the trade, so they didn't say anything in the hope that she could see something that they missed. Sakura then walked over and looked to the side. Kakuro's poison has been refined with heavy metals. It is of a type that penetrates the muscles and destroys the cells. From the looks of it, his heart muscles are being destroyed as we speak. The information Tony gave Karen was exactly what he remembered of the poison in the series, but to be sure, he only mentioned that the symptoms resembled each other. Since Karen's examination specifically looked for these symptoms, he was able to confirm that it was indeed this type of poison. Karen didn't doubt Tony, she had long accepted that her cool older brother had her moments of weirdness, but she never joked when it came to serious things. She even provided him with a suggestion to get Kenkuro out of danger temporarily. As everyone listened and Sakura stared at her senior in amazement, Chio became aware of Kakashi's presence. Kanoha's white fang. She yelled as she lunged at Kakashi, prepare to die. Just as Chio was about to act, she suddenly saw a pink substance rush towards her and send her flying even faster in the other direction, crashing into the wall. Tony. Tamari yelled. What? Tony turned around showing an innocent look she'll be fine, I've just left her immobile until she calms down. He embarrassed he looked at her sister who was stuck to the wall with a huge pink gum, leaving only her face exposed, while Chio didn't fully understand that she had just passed. Sister, look closely, it is not the white fang of Kanoha. Hey. Chio narrowed her eyes and after realizing her mistake, she laughed. I was just playing senile. Ho ho ho. Kakashi, Tony approached Kakashi and whispered in his ear, I think the best thing for everyone is not to tell him he's your father, who knows how he would react. Kakashi nodded as a bead of sweat broke out on his forehead. Free me boy. Chio demanded. Sure, Tony agreed as he turned around and looked at a sand ninja, hey. Go find the biggest scratching post you have. Tony, can't you undo your technique? Tamari asked, as her lip trembled. Can you tell the wind to stop when you've stirred it up? Thus, while Karen extracted as much poison as possible from Kankuro with Sakura as her assistant, Chio had to take the longest shower of her entire life with the help of some kunoichi, since she couldn't move, even when the sand began to sticking to the gum when being transported. The screams that rang out in Sunagakir as the gum was peeled from his hair was music to Tony's ears. What? Tony was not going to hit an old woman no matter how bad he liked it, physical violence against the elderly was wrong. There are more civilized and effective methods of revenge, such as chewing gum in the hair. Meanwhile, Tony figures teen guy should be on the way by now as backup. Or they should be soon, since thanks to him, everyone made it to Sunagakir earlier than they should. That's all, Karen sighed as she dropped the liquid poison mixture into the deep tray. There's still some poison in her system, so we'll have to prepare an antidote, but the immediate danger is gone. Can you give me a list of the medicinal plants you have available? And set aside some samples of the poison to verify the effectiveness of the antidote. Sakura, help me get him started on M4, and then come help me analyze the antidote. Yes. Tamari leaned against the wall and slid down it as she sighed in relief. You're just like that slimy girl, Chio commented as he returned to the medical room with no trace of gum and a few less hairs on his head. Tsunadesima is our teacher, Karen and Sakura said at the same time, they looked at each other and laughed. A doctor came over and handed over the list of herbs at his disposal. After reading them, the Kunoichi duo was escorted to the greenhouse. Meanwhile, a ninja approached with a message from the Hokage. Looks like Guy and his team have been sent as reinforcements, Kakashi told them after reading the scroll. Really? Naruto commented happily as he confirmed the content that's great. After that, Naruto tried to run off not knowing where to look for the kidnappers, the sand ninja explaining that they lost their trail and Kankuro revealing that he took a piece of cloth from Sasori during their fight. After some talking, it was decided that Kakashi will use his ninja dogs under the premise that he had eight dogs, while Fenrir only had one. As night fell, Karen managed to create a more effective antidote than in the original version with different medicinal herbs thanks to Sakura's help. As they say, 
two minds are better than one. After successfully administering the antidote to Kankuro, the group went to sleep and were told that Pakan found Akatsuki's place, so they left after eating Tony's food for lunch. Karen stayed in Sunagakir to attend to Kankuro in case there was any hidden threat left in his body. The only negative part was that Chio joined the group. As Chio blurted out an explanation about what the Biju were to Sakura, Pakan led Guy's team that was closest to the Akatsuki hideout after intercepting them halfway. Zetsu notifies at the same time that they have been discovered and they discuss who to send. After exchanging some comments, Kisame will play Guy and company. Meanwhile, Kakashi, Naruto, Sakura, Chio, and Tony meet up with the other Akatsuki member sent to slow them down and buy time. Itachi Uchiha Itachi Uchiha Naruto said. So this is Sasuke's brother, the one who caused him to suffer so much. Sakura clenched her fists tightly. How long, Itachi commented as he looked at Naruto. Tony was looking at the nails instead of him. Why the hell is nail polish part of the uniform? Was it Conan's idea? Don't look him in the eye or you're dead. Kakashi yelled when he noticed Itachi raise his hand. Tony knew that what he had in front of him was not actually the real Itachi Uchiha, just a sacrifice that barely had 30% of his chakra. If he was the real thing, he would have already started running. His strength may have grown a lot in this time, but he's still no match for Itachi and he knows it. But still, he pretended to listen to Kakashi late and got sucked into the Jinjutsu. I didn't expect that you, among the four of us, would be the first to fall into my illusion, Itachi commented inside his world. I was almost sure that the first would be Naruto. I needed a place where I could talk to you without anyone spying on us answered Tony, looking around with interest this technique that you're using to buy time won't last too long when you only have 30% of your chakra, so let me get to the point. I know everything about your deal with Danzo and Saratobi, the truth of the death of your clan due to the coup plans, I have been in the same class as your little brother, I know what Orochimaru wants to do with him and I know about your illness incurable. Even the crow with the eye that you prepared for Naruto is no secret to me. Itachi went blank for a moment after hearing Tony's statement. It seems that you are not as calm as you seem if you say such nonsense. Tony stared at Itachi with a face of are you really going to come out with that classic? Look, I know that you infiltrated Akatsuki by order of the village and that the only reason Sasuke is still breathing is because it was your condition to act. You are using hate as a stimulus for your brother to become strong in a world where strength determines whether you are controlled or you are the one who controls others. Then you plan for Sasuke to eliminate you to give him your eyes, without letting him know that you're actually already dying. Itachi's eyes widened almost to the limit. Now, the news that you may not know why you had to be careful in Akatsuki. Danzo died because he thought messing with me was a good idea and what happened to the Uchiha clan was revealed. The coup is not mentioned, but the massacre was a plan hatched by Danzo and Saratobi after a long conspiracy, of which you were the executing hand. A victim who was tricked. Now, the death of those two makes the truth of the matter only known to a few people, who decided to ignore any morality and turned your act and order into treason. Itachi looked silently at Tony, he didn't interrupt the explanation, but he paid a lot of attention. Now, let's move on to the part that interests you the most your illness and Sasuke Tony noticed how he trembled slightly when he mentioned the name of his dear little brother first, I can cure your illness so that you can live to old age without problem. That's not possible Itachi intervened at that moment I know my condition and I can't be saved. Not even Tsunade could do it. Well, it's nice to see you stop acting so mysterious and be honest, Tony agreed. But you have no idea what I'm capable of. If you have even the slightest information about me, you will know that my food is special. I can prepare a meal that will heal you completely, but it comes at a price. Now it's you who wants to manipulate me. Leave your political ninja mentality with me, the price I am telling you is that the food will cause you great pain for a short period of time. Also, I can't send it to you sealed in a parchment, but I have to cook it for you on the spot before you eat it. Heck, I can even make you regain all the sight you've lost so far. That's all. Just some pain. No, now come my conditions. Don't give me that I knew it look. Tony held up two fingers. I'm only asking two things of you. One, make sure by all means that Zetsu doesn't find out about this. Not when you decide to look for me, not when we meet, not even when you're cured. Zetsu. Itachi frowned. 
You don't care about Akatsuki or anyone else, but Zetsu. Why? I'll tell you once you're healthy. I'll just tell you that out of all of Akatsuki, he's even more dangerous than Pain or Toby. Toby. He is not a threat. Yeah, the guy in the mask with the orange swirl. He's actually called Abito and he's also an Uchiha, but he'll pose as Madara when he stops acting like a jerk. He is long to count, just watch out for those two. Especially since his plans involve your little brother after your planned death. What? As I said, it's long to explain Tony interrupted, not wanting to make the meeting longer than necessary and we don't have time since I assume they'll take me out of your genjutsu shortly. My second condition is. Itachi listened and looked at him in amazement. I'll think about it, I'll contact you according to the instructions you've given me later. Clear. The illusion suddenly began to crack and Tony snapped back to reality. Are you okay Tony? Sakura asked as she removed her hand from Tony's shoulder. Yes, I didn't react in time, I'm sorry, Tony apologized. Actually there was never any danger for Tony, since he awakened his gourmet cells, he has some advantages as if he were a Jinchuriki. He can trust the gourmet demon to interrupt the illusion whenever he wants. The ensuing battle was the same as in the original story, after Naruto defeats Itachi, a different person's face is revealed. Is it another illusion or? Sakura asked uncertainly. He's a ninja from my village Chio commented after seeing his face his name is Yura, he disappeared shortly before Gara's kidnapping. Somewhere else. Are you back yet? Kisame asked seeing Itachi's eyes widen. Yes. Itachi pretended to listen to Kisame's jokes, but he was too absorbed in the information he got from Tony. Curing his disease, another Uchiha alive, the danger of Zetsu, his plans for Sasuke. Just who really was Tony? After collecting the fake Itachi's body, the team met up with Guy and company in front of the Akatsuki's hideout. After confirming the formation of the barrier and Niji locating the five seals that make it up, Team Guy spreads out to simultaneously remove the tags and open the barrier. Tony on the other hand, was trying to remember more details. If there were no changes, inside are Daidara with only his right arm, Sasori inside his puppet, and Gara's body. At the same time, each member of the Guy team should have activated a trap that causes them to have to face a version of themselves to waste time. Oh. Sakura knocked on the entrance after the seals were removed and the entrance cleared, revealing Sasori and Daidara sitting on top of Gara. Looks like we're late, Tony commented. Hey Gara, Wake up, we're here to help you, Naruto yelled with a trembling voice. Naruto. Sakura knew from her experience as a medical ninja that Gara wasn't sleeping. Do you understand? Daidara said as he punched Gara's cheek from under him. This idiot is dead. Naruto was overcome with anger and tried to charge towards the Akatsuki duo, only to be stopped by Kakashi and Tony. Don't go Naruto. They're just provoking you to act impulsively, Tony pointed out somewhat annoyed. Have you learned nothing these years? While everyone was having their thoughts, Tony was thinking about what to do next. Should he stay and help Sakura and Chio against Sasori? Or should he support Kakashi and Daidara? Tony. Stay and help deal with Sasori, we'll go after Daidara, Kakashi said suddenly. Hey. It was only now that Tony realized that while he was thinking, the rest of the world was moving on and the division occurred. Okay. The mission requires Chio to survive for now and Tony doesn't have too many worries about Sasori's poison. Not only do they have some antidotes that Sakura and Karen prepared before they left, their pearl jam can take care of the rest. In fact, maybe he should have used it on Kankuro earlier. Nah. Hiroko is a combat puppet, we have to separate him from Sasori at all costs, Chio said. The problem is that his form is a little different from the one I knew. The reinforcement of his back and left arm were not in the original version, so we can assume that he has modified the puppet. Next, we have to break the puppet so that Sasori comes out, is that it? Yes, you're right, Chio agreed. Unfortunately, I don't have the physical strength to break it, so I'll have to leave the work to you too. But you have to dodge all of his attacks, without exception. Because he's poisoned, Sakura pointed out. Yes, a simple scratch would be fatal. Not really, Tony commented. What are you talking about? Chio frowned. Kenkuro was about to die from that very poison. 
Sakura was just as puzzled, as the effects of Pearl Jam were known to none other than Taiyuya, Karen, Shizun, and Tsunade. Come closer. Tony covered her mouth with her hand to prevent lip reading and whispered his plan, which Chio then followed up on. Did you finish once and for all? Sasori yelled impatiently. You know I hate waiting, Grandma. Go. The three of them charged at Sasori's puppet, which ripped the cloth covering its mouth and opened it to start shooting poison-coated senbons at high speed. As Sakura and Chio dodged the projectiles, Tony didn't want to expend so much effort and decided to take a more direct approach. Gluttony Crocombush A stalagmite composed of candy rose from the ground and Tony covered it in hard candy, forming a shield that deflected the senbons due to its shape and created a conical safe space behind him. Have you seen through my attack? Sasori closed his mouth when she ran out of poison needles and looked at the three of them, try this then. A projectile was shot from the body of the puppet, which when it reached its position, fired a series of cylinders that opened up, revealing yet more needles within. Given the position of each cylinder, the dodging angles were more complex, but it still failed to hit anyone. Did you even manage to avoid that? Sakura charged towards the puppet, while Chio stayed in her place and Tony performed hand seals. Do you want to charge against me? Edie he couldn't finish the sentence due to the sudden impact of force that came from under the puppet and shattered it. Yes. Tony stopped pretending to make stamps and raised his fist. Fenrir moved between the shadows of the needles that were shot at high speed and hid in the shadow of Sasori's puppet, so that the moment she stopped acting, she was torn apart by the battle wolf. A shadow covered in the remains of the puppet's cloth escaped in time. It's been twenty years since we last met, grandson, Chio said, seeing that the plan was successful. But Tony did not let his guard down for the first victory and as Chio spoke, he threw his knives to smash the head of the Hiroko puppet. In the original story, Sasori used the head as a surprise attack to confirm his suspicions about his grandmother's manipulation of the chakra threads. It's better to let Sasori hesitate a little longer. Oh. It seems that this boy understands a little about puppets, interesting Sasori commented as he removed the cloth from his head long time no see, grandma. You. Impossible. Chio was surprised to see his grandson's appearance you're exactly the same as you were twenty years ago, you haven't changed a bit. What's going on? I have simply become the incarnation of my art, eternal and immutable, Sasori replied, a pity my Hiroko puppet was destroyed, but I have something in my collection that is better, one of my favorites in fact. A scroll fell from his sleeve and took it, before unrolling it in front of them with one hand, revealing a seal with the number three written on it. Three. Sakura looked puzzled. It's possible. Chiyo's eyes widened as she connected the dots. With a puff of smoke, a new human puppet appeared with Sasori. Indeed, it is the third Kazakage. Chio stated, horrified by her grandson's actions. It was one of the more difficult additions to get, but his power is worth it. Sasori looked around her as she spoke, still unsure where the blow that destroyed his puppet came from. Let's do a demonstration, shall we? Extensions of blades shot out of the third Kazakage's arm as he charged towards Sakura, coated in a liquid that was clearly poison. Chio intercepted the slash with the shattered puppet's tail and was able to save Sakura. I see, so it was your chakra cords that allowed the girl to move freely, Sasori realized. How about then? The third Kazakage's right arm snapped open revealing multiple Fuenjutsu seals from which sprouted an enormous number of long wooden mechanical arms. Sakura. Chio yelled as she tried to pull him out of harm's way, but her arms inevitably swept over the kunoichi. A flash rushed into the outstretched arms and cut as sharp as a mirror, thus thwarting the attack. Sasori frowned and looked at the person responsible for the attack, Tony. Don't you know there's a saying that ladies should die first? You should wait your turn, I won't be long. Sasori moved the little finger of her left hand and several pipes poked out between the puppet hands to expel yellow smoke, which managed to hit Sakura naked. Chio tried to yank the kunoichi out of the poisonous cloud, but Sasori threw several ropes to hold her target. In the end, Sakura was forced to use an explosive seal to get out of there due to the urgent lack of air, but she couldn't help but inhale some of the cloud. I'm in trouble, Sakura commented as she felt the symptoms in her body. It's not the same poison I use on Kenkuro. It seems to be more of some kind of paralytic drug. 
Her extremities are starting to go numb she analyzed while she looked at her trembling hand I need the antidote in less than an hour or the paralysis will be so strong that I will suffocate and die. I knew it, that boy said my poison wasn't that deadly, so you must have developed some sort of antidote for my favorite poison in the time it took you to chase us, Sasori said with a smirk. I am also a master of poisons, how could I have only one poison in continuous use with me? That would be stupid. Me and my mouth. Tony cursed himself, if he hadn't said anything, Sasori would really have kept using the poison they had an antidote for Sakura, do you have time to counter it? I don't think so, Sakura replied with a dark face, I don't have herbs at hand or instruments, I can only delay their effects with my medical jutsu, but then I won't be able to help and I'll be defenseless. Ding! New mission the flavor is a blast. Error. Generating again. New quest and unspeakable sin. Task Sasori turned himself into a puppet and made one of the biggest mistakes as a living being, removing his taste buds. And now he's playing with poison. That only leaves us with one option destroy Sasori. Reward unlocks Poison Kitchen Bianchi Katikyo Hitman Reborn and now Sadatsuka Shokujki no Soma along with his combo recipes. Note I feel unspeakable pity for your enemies. Come on, I have to solve the problem I found myself, Tony sighed. The combined Bianchi and now recipes. He shuddered just thinking about it. Yes, feeling sorry for the enemy is the least he can do. He ran toward Sakura picking up the senbans embedded in the ground and using his devil fruit powers, he created a quick meal in the form of carriage with sauce, wrapped in lettuce with a crepe and a squeeze of lemon. Don't ask questions, retreat with Chio to cover you and eat this to remove the paralysis. She handed the food with pearl jam to Sakura. You'll have a strong reaction, but everything will be fine as long as you stay calm, okay? All right. Sakura knew and trusted Tony and his food enough to decide to bet on his help. Do you want us to leave you alone against my grandson? Chio asked, surprised by what she was hearing. Did you go crazy? We'll eliminate you. Oh no. We'll take a lot more than a Sasori to finish off Tony Sakura said with a confident smile let's go. I'll need you to cover me and the sooner we finish this, the sooner we can return to help. Sakura took Chio away under a surprised look, but not before sneaking antidotes to Tony, just in case. Where do you think you're going, Grandma? Sasori tried to stop them from leaving, but his movement froze before twisting his back suddenly and avoiding the knife that almost pierced his glabella yuri irritating me, child. I think you have forgotten the reason why the third Kazakage became known. The Kazakage's puppet opened his mouth and iron sand began to gush out in large quantities, floating around him and forming two wings. I am the only puppeteer in the world capable of creating human puppets, which have a unique advantage using the techniques from when they were alive. Sasori added as he sneered, the third Kazakage had a special body related to magnetism. Iron Sand Scattered Rain The iron sand condensed into small bullets and shot at high speed towards Tony. Too quickly. The speed at which they were approaching Tony and due to their small size along with the dispersion, caused him to be unable to transform the iron sand into food in time to avoid the attack. The iron bullets impacted and kicked up a large amount of dust, which when it settled, only revealed perforations in the rock. There are no traces of blood, shall I avoid it? Sasori looked closely. Suddenly, the same feeling as before washed over him and he hastily formed a huge brick made up of iron sand to defend himself. The same attack that smashed the first puppet of him was barely blocked and a large claw mark appeared on the shield. A wolf? Sasori managed to see the figure of the attacker this time. A dark wolf with pink eyes of a height of two meters, who looked at him with dissatisfaction for having managed to block his attack at the last moment. You only have a few days and you're just starting to grow Tony consoled the battle wolf whose pride was hurt and looked at him with puppy eyes okay, don't do that to me. When we get back you can eat the big turtle egg omelet at you in Discworld that I have saved. Agree? Fenrir nodded and returned to Tony's shadow with an expression of, I'll settle for that. Interesting, I never made an animal puppet because I didn't find any that were interesting. That wolf of yours could be the first of my new collection, it would be useful for infiltrations, Sasori commented as she began to think about how he would empty the beast and fill it with weapons. She reconstructed the torn block by rearranging the iron sand through magnetism and directly through the entire piece towards Tony. Do you think that because I prefer medium and long-range attacks, I can't defend myself if you go after me? 
Tony looked at him with disdain as his hands and arms grew, swelled, and a red line appeared on each of them from his wrist to his shoulder I've wanted to do this for a long time, but I was embarrassed that others would see it. Just when the block was two meters away and he would hit it in the next second. Ora ora. Tony not only managed to stop the block of iron sand dead in its tracks, but sent it forcefully back with such speed that Sasori didn't have time to move the third Kazakage's puppet, and it was hit square, sending it flying through the ceiling of the cave and destroying it. Rocks fell, the sky revealed overhead as the remaining buildings lost their magnetism, resulting in the iron sand falling without any manipulating force to the ground. What a monster! Sasori thought as she looked at the remains of one of her favorite collections. So, it wasn't just the pink-haired Kunoichi who had brute strength. Maybe this guy is her teacher. Weird, they seem to be about the same age. As Sasori stared at Tony in surprise after his change, Tony was rubbing his abnormally large fists together in irritation. This is why I prefer to use the other powers, now my knuckles sting like hell, he muttered with a frown. Besides, using my gourmet demon will only make me hungry much faster and then I have to eat a lot to compensate. I'd better try to finish it as soon as possible. He took out a dose of the antidote Sakura gave him and injected it into her arms. The antidote will only last three minutes, but my gourmet cells should generate antibodies to the poison in two minutes maximum with this stimulus. I admit I didn't expect you to manage to destroy my third Kazakage puppet. And that change in your arms are you part of a clan? Sasa raised his hand and began to unbutton the Akatsuki robe calmly making your members become abnormally large, that's something only the Akimichi clan can achieve. Tony gave Sasori a wonderful look. Good boy, your theory is so off the mark but you were right at the same time, that's a talent. Oh wait, I remember. The girl from earlier called you Tony and if you're from the Akimichi clan, that means you must be the owner of that ninja grocery store I heard Zetsu talking about. It's amazing that you've managed to reach this level of strength despite running a business, he commented with a bit of admiration in his voice, too bad, all your hard work will come to nothing. I'll eliminate you, then turn you into a human puppet and take over your business. It will be useful to have more money for materials. She removed her robes and revealed his puppet body. Two jagged metal wings on his back unfurled, he had a cylinder with the word scorpion on his chest and a coil of poison-covered metal wire with a sharp point unscrewed from his stomach cavity to hold him up. I guess I haven't used myself since I joined Akatsuki, this will be fun. Two nozzles poked out of his palms and torrents of high-temperature flames erupted. What the hell? Are you trying to play with fire with someone like him? Gluttony ripples of the Red Sea. Tony plunges his fists into the earth and transforms a large amount of the ground into tomato sauce, which, carried by the force of the blow's impact, generates waves that rush towards the incoming fire, turning into magma that blocks the attack. Despite the pressure of the spitting flames, they cannot heat the magma any further and their density and weight offset to a standstill the action for several seconds. Lava Manipulation Sasori looked annoyed as he stopped breathing fire I thought only that woman from the mist and the jinchuriki and the monkey could do that. Do you have any blood mutation? Actually, Sasori began to shoot large amounts of water from the nozzles of his hands. Tony was also annoyed, he had activated the gourmet demon intending to get close and finish off Sasori before he could use the scrolls on his back. Now that he started using the water scroll, it would only take a few moments before he would focus the pressure and turn the scattered water into jets of pressure capable of cutting through rock. She narrowed her eyes and used her sensonine abilities to check how far away Sakura and Chio were, while also making sure Naruto and Kakashi hadn't returned. Well, I should be able to finish it in time, she nodded inwardly, Fenmer, listen to me. What are you doing? Sasori noticed Tony's lips move, but due to his own attack and the other party's quick evasions, he was unable to read lips. Understood. Now go away, Tony ordered. The battle wolf stepped out of his shadow and headed in the same direction as Sakura and Chio. If you think that sending your wolf to ask for help will do any good, you are sorely mistaken, Sasori said with a smile. I wonder how my grandmother and that Kunoichi would react and they were suddenly attacked under my control upon their arrival. Who said he went to ask for help? Tony looked at him with a smile from ear to ear on the contrary, I want to make sure that nobody approaches during the next few minutes. As good a point as he finished the sentence, his body began to change again. His hair fell silent, his nose bulged and his eyes narrowed. 
At the same time, his jaw opened to his waist and several sharp fangs protruded from the opening. Awakened gourmet demon, second form gluttony homunculus. Sasori shuddered at the hateful transformation. What an ugly thing you are. It's no wonder you don't want anyone else to come he looked at Tony's new form with disgust you're like those monsters hiding in Kakuzu, there's nothing further from true art than you. I better end this once and for all. She extended a string of chakra to the scrolls on his back and lifted it into the air before opening it and a hundred puppets shooting out of the scroll. Puppets with blades, swords, metal claws, clubs, etc. She opened a compartment in her right chest and a large number of chakra strings were connected to the new puppets. This is better, Tony laughed and rushed toward the dozens of puppets assailing him with the familiar sound of continually snapping jaws. He needed to be careful, because the fewer puppets left as he destroys them, the better Sasori will be able to control the remaining ones. Despite his altered and seemingly heavy form, Tony's agility should not be underestimated and since his body has already had enough time to generate antibodies to Sasori's venom, as long as he doesn't receive a serious injury, small injuries are acceptable. M.U. Day M.U. Day M.U. Day M.U. Day Tony crushed the puppets two by two with his huge fists, when an attack was not evaded he would extend one of his arms and hold another puppet in front of him as a shield, after which they were thrown like projectiles. His body began to receive cuts here and there, but his accelerated recovery caused said wounds to close up just a few seconds later. Meanwhile, outside the cave. Kayasama, let's hurry up. Sakura yelled, now recovered from her paralysis thanks to the food. Tony must be having a hard time, we have to go back and help. Be a little considerate with these old bones, Chio snorted a little tired, suddenly looking up, something's coming. Fenrir. Sakura looked at the battle wolf in surprise. Did something happen to Tony? Fenrir barked and gestured for them to follow him. Chio and Sakura exchanged glances and nodded, before rushing in Fenrir's direction. Seeing that the two followed him as expected, Fenrir tracked the scent of Naruto and Kakashi to guide them to them. Tony's instructions had been clear, not to let them come back and lead them to the other teammates to help get Gara back. Once the two parties meet, he must return to Tony. Back at the Akatsuki hideout. Tony had managed to destroy all the puppets and was holding Sasori by the neck. Sasori's puppet body was in poor condition, missing one of the metal wings, both arms, his right eye, and one leg. How can Kanoha have a monster like you? Her, she asked as her remaining eye looked at Tony. The broken parts didn't worry him too much, the body he's wearing doesn't feel pain and as long as he doesn't find out the core secret of her, he will be saved. Too bad he's going up against Tony. Hunger had already started to take hold of him and not wanting to waste any more time, he crushed Sasori's head and grabbed the cylinder with the word scorpion written on it, before crushing it like a grape. After making sure of his destruction, he deactivated the gourmet demon and lay down on the ground, tired. I didn't expect using the second form to be so consuming, Tony snorted between breaths, well, I'll eat something and then forge a scroll with the Akatsuki information. Even though the fight was over, he was still secretly alert in case Zetsu appeared near him. He didn't like the fact that Sasori said that Zetsu had information on him. Since Sasori died at his hands, he didn't tell anyone that Kabuto is his spy and the meeting he had arranged on the bridge. He could add that information along with that of the Akatsuki members, their abilities and weaknesses as well as Payne's impending attack on Kanoha. After eating and resting a bit, Fenrir returned and stood guard while Tony recovered. Once he got some energy back, he started preparing and putting away various things. Sasori's puppet, saved. Akatsuki ring, saved. Akatsuki ultra comprehensive information scroll, completed. The scroll included the meeting on the bridge in 10 days, the identity of each member and their information, Payne's planned attack on Kanoha, Toby's true identity in the secret behind his intangibility, Madara's planned resurrection, TH plan of Zetsu's I moon and his true purpose, etc. It basically includes everything needed in the plot, except for Kagaya's identity. As to whether or not Tsunade and the people getting the information find it credible, well, he couldn't do more. Ding! Mission completed successfully, delivering rewards. Bianchi from Poisonous Kitchen Katikyo Hitman Reborn and now Saritsuka Shokujki no Soma along with their combined recipes. Note I feel unspeakable pity for your enemies. Again. I think it's the first time I'll say it but. I'm not going to try this food. 
Tony shuddered to think of the result of such a combination. To save energy, he used Fenrir as a mount and headed for the big explosion in the forest, where Daedara had to immolate himself to finish buying time. I see that you have already recovered Gara he commented seeing everyone tired and exhausted. What happened to Sasori? Chio asked. Dead, quite, Tony declared as he held up a scroll. I have her puppet, if you want to get it back later, he added. I see. Sakura, if you don't mind, you could use some medical jutsu on my hands he asked as he showed the half-healed peeling and bleeding skin I can recover on my own, but honestly, the itching is quite annoying and shouldn't cost you much. I also don't want Karen to scold me. Sure, let me see. Sakura reached over to examine her wounds and placed her palm on her knuckles, generating green chakra to begin to heal. The blonde boy ran away. Her, she asked as they healed Kakashi. He blew himself up. Kakashi pointed to the arm on the grass, all that was left of Daedara. Mm, -mm ten ten, would you mind sealing that arm? What do you want an arm for? Ten ten asked surprised. You're not thinking of modifying your hands in the same way, are you? Lee asked, horrified at the idea. That? Not. Tony immediately denied Lee's crazy imagination but if we take him back, he can be studied and perhaps give new approaches to improve prosthetics. Also, that arm had another Akatsuki ring on it. With two of them missing, the extraction of the Bijuu's chakra for the statue would be much slower, if they manage to get their hands on the remaining Jinchurikis once he hands over his information scroll. Despite his obvious disgust, Ten Ten sealed the arm in a scroll and gave it to Tony. The rest of the trip was unchanged from the original trajectory. Chio gave his life to return Gara to the living, a funeral was held, Tony made a 50% discount that would last a week in his honor and everyone finally returned to Kanoha. Karen went to leave her things at home, Kakashi would have to spend several weeks in the hospital and by the time Tsunade got the information from Sasori's spy, there were only six days left. Only after the rest of the ninja had left the office did he hand over the scroll with all the information he stole from Akatsuki and left before Tsunade opened it. When he was finally comfortable in his own house, a familiar sound played in his head. Ding! Mission Aggressive Marketing Completed successfully, delivering rewards Interdimensional travel ticket single-use item has been exchanged for an interdimensional summoning ticket single-use item. Interdimensional summoning ticket single-use item The host can use it to summon a temporary clone of a character, creature, or item for support. The conditions and restrictions vary based on the clone called, but it will always have a limited duration that cannot exceed 12h. It can be considered as an ace in the hole, it is too multifaceted. The optional quest has been successfully completed, delivering rewards. At last, I am curious as to what will be the help that the system will give to Karen. Optional reward new defensive gourmet ninja technique Carquignoli's indestructible barrier. Devil fruit oak oak no me modified. A devil fruit? Tony's eyes almost popped out of his head and he hurried to review the specific information. Oak oak no me a heart-shaped paramecia type devil fruit that bears resemblance to a strawberry or a peach depending on your point of view. It grants its user great manipulation of the surrounding environment by manifesting a light blue hemispherical spatial barrier with the user as its epicenter. He can manipulate anything within the barrier in a surgical way. Enclosed is a scroll with its best known uses at the hands of the Surgeon of Death Trafalgar D. Water Law System changes the devil fruit has been adapted to the world of Naruto, the sea curse has been removed, but so has the ability to perform the eternal youth operation. Once its user dies, the fruit's power will not manifest into another fruit, but will disappear permanently. Additional note the taste is still terrible and cannot be changed by the host. Come now. Tony complained even if I use the awakening of the fruit, I can't change the bad taste. But the system's response held firm. Not. I'm sorry, sis, Tony sighed. I did what I could. After praying for three seconds for her little sister, he called her to end her suffering quickly. Karen, come here. He yelled, I have a surprise for you. A surprise? Karen approached Tony excitedly. Tony maintained a forced smile, but inside he was sighing. You didn't have to do that, Tony grumbled as he held an ice pack to his head, comically trying to calm down the swelling. He didn't really hurt him, but he knew from experience that the best way to calm his sister down was to pretend a little Sakura is influencing you with her bad habits. 
you told me that the taste was not very good, but this was on another level. Karen kept annoyed all over as she read the devil fruit scroll that she ate with immense difficulty after a battle of wills. Perhaps she should have told him that one bite was enough. What do I say if someone asks about my new ability? Karen asked a little worried as she read the scroll. This power was too versatile and easy to arouse jealousy. Just say it's something you invented by combining your Uzumaki lineage, your knowledge of Fuenjutsu about barriers, what Tsunade taught you about medical jutsu, and some sudden inspiration combined with an accident during an experiment, Tony commented. Powers gained by accidents are more common than you think. And if someone wants to know the details of the experiment? Refuse. Say that you removed that information from your memory as being too dangerous and simply not something that can be taught, replicated, or inherited. And if he asks Tsunade's NCI, Taiyuya, and the others? Tell them there's a saying everyone has the right to have a secret or two Tony reassured her they should understand. The two kept silent while Karen continued to study the scroll, because once she had memorized its contents, it would be destroyed at Tony's suggestion. Your ability with food comes from a strange fruit, right? Karen suddenly asked without taking her eyes off the parchment. Yes, but mine didn't have instructions Tony laughed and didn't hide anything, they were confident enough I think you understand what the existence of this type of fruit implies and why I never said anything. Remember, never document anything about the fruit or tell anyone the truth. Didn't you think of giving the fruit to Taiyuya? Karen raised a valid point. I thought about it, but due to her powers, I think she will get more potential in the hands of the best medical kunoichi of the new generation he replied to appease her besides, I've only gotten two of them in my entire life and I don't know if there will be one third in the future. I'll keep an eye out in case I find another similar one, Karen agreed. Tony wanted to tell him that's impossible, but he decided to keep his mouth shut. For starters, the next support reward the system gives out might not even be a devil fruit. Knock. Knock. Someone knocked on the door and after Tony opened it, he saw an AMBU member standing in the doorway. Hoka Jessima wants you to meet her urgently, he informed her. Looks like they really took the Fenrir threat seriously, good to know. Okay Tony nodded Fenrir, stay and take care of Karen until she's finished he requested you have the food that I promised you were always. Tony accompanied the ANBU over the rooftops without wasting any time and reached Tsunade's office. There were only the two of them in the office, as the ANBU left. Tony, how reliable is the information you got? Tsunade asked with a seriousness never seen before. Totally reliable, he replied without hesitating for a second. Damn. Tsunade did not doubt Tony. They checked many details like the members and knowing what to look for, the matches began to jump non-stop. But knowing that Madara was involved, that someone was trapped on the moon, that Jiraiya's apprentices had changed so much, that there was a plant monster and spores that were so dangerous and all the crazy stuff contained in the scroll, he needed someone to step up to finish. To accept it. Kakashi won't take this information well. Tsunade rubbed her forehead in exasperation. Knowing that he was manipulated into ending Rin just for a beetle to see. Yeah, he won't take it well. What's your take on all this, Tony? Asked Tsunade you must have had time to think while you returned to the village. I have some thoughts. Tsunade waved her hand for him to continue. The biggest current threat are Zetsu, Abito, and Pain he explained although I'm sorry to say this because of Kakashi, Abito's mind has been deliberately deranged by Madara to such an extent that it's terrible and unfair, but it's a threat that must be dealt with. Removed. Not locked away, sealed, or treated, but something more permanent. Then we have Pain, whose eyes are the legendary Rinnegan of the Sage of Six Paths. The ideal? Gouge out his eyes and destroy them, without hesitating or being tempted. Without them, he is an ordinary ninja whose body is in disrepair due to the enormous burden those eyes carry. He would be doing him a favor actually, with medical ninjutsu, he can get other normal eyes. I agree that the approach with Abito is necessary, his spatial abilities are too dangerous and his mentality is at a point of no return, even if he discovers the truth of what happened Tsunade agreed with a frown as for Pain, whose real name is Nagato, I think Jiraiya might. Tsunade, with all due respect, you're the one who surely should know Jiraiya better Tony interrupted do you believe without a doubt and with absolute certainty that he will be able to act decisively against his former students without trying to reason, give him a chance. Opportunity or have a teacher-student talk to teach them the right way first. 
Tell the truth. Tsunade clenched her fists, not giving an answer, which in itself was already an answer. Tony looked at her and didn't take his eyes off her. Jiraiya's death only mattered to him because of Tsunade's feelings and he only brought up that awkward point because he didn't want Pain and Conan to become alert, become more difficult to deal with or they will hide. Consider it, we are not weighing benefits and losses, the damage that could be caused by failing is astronomical and the only gain will be to keep the peace. Or relative peace in the shinobi world. I'll think about it, Tsunade replied as he slumped back in his chair, what about Zetsu? He's the biggest threat of all, Tony said, a long life of scheming and manipulation that makes him more treacherous than Danzo, the ability to hide from almost all sensor ninjas, rudimentary manipulation of the element of wood, its spores, and mimicry ability. The desire to revive the Ten Tails along with the army of white Zetsus makes it a headache. The ideal would be a method to seal the original which is the black Zetsu, but not a normal seal, but the eternal and unbreakable type. And it's not that they abound. A special sealing Tsunade looked at the ceiling for now, I'll warn the other villages that Akatsuki is behind his Jinchurikis. There's no guarantee that they'll listen to me too much or be too trusting, but it'll be something to start with. He straightened up and looked at Tony again. Anything else? I got in touch with Itachi Uchiha. I'm aware of what happened to the Uchiha clan thanks to the documents you got from Danzo. Honestly, he didn't know how Itachi would react to the current situation. What happened? Tony recounted his meeting with him in a quick summary of events. Itachi's illness Tsunade tapped her finger on the table rhythmically, you're going to use those special plates of yours, right? I am aware of his medical report, it is not something that can be cured with current medicine. Yes, the problem now would be Sasuke Tony pointed out if after his obsession with power he discovers that Kanoha is to blame for the way her brother acted and decides to change the target of his hatred to the village. Do you think that even if you cure his brother and tell him the truth, he will take revenge? Itachi should still be able to stop him. Tsunade, he is a teenager who, since I met him, has been obsessed with revenge and has spent a few years under the influence of Orochimaru. The strange thing would be if he decided to return to the village as if nothing had happened, being all smiles and sweeping the matter under the rug as Naruto seems to fantasize Tony raised his eyebrow as he looked at the Hokage I'm not Naruto and I live in reality. If Sasuke confronts Itachi and kills him, even after learning the truth, he will attack the village in retaliation. If Sasuke forgives his older brother by chance and accepts what happened, he will attack the village secretly from Itachi if necessary to settle accounts. The possibility that he decides to leave everything in the past and go to live somewhere in the world to repopulate the Uchiha clan is also not ideal, because he could transmit his revenge plans to the following generations. I'm not saying we should actively hunt Sasuke now, because that will make the situation even worse, but being on guard until everything is cleared up and Itachi can try to calm him down seems necessary to me and I must be clear. Tony's voice dropped a bit but it was just as clear if the time comes, I won't hesitate just because Naruto or Sakura will throw a tantrum. I have family in the village, I have you as friends and keeping you safe is a priority. Stop. I understand, but don't let Naruto listen to you said Tsunade with a dark face and if that moment really comes, which I don't want make sure that nobody can find out what happened, ever. This is an order. Of course Tony returned to his usual attitude have you already started to take action against Payne's attack? Preparations are ongoing, I don't know if we'll have time, but it will ensure that the number of victims is greatly reduced. It's a pity we don't know the exact date of the attack, but we'll do what we can. She took a document to his right and looked at it. I hope I can count on you to get a large supply of emergency dry rations. If the damage is as extensive as estimated, many people would starve for days even with the village's current supplies. No problem, I'll provide them free of charge to the village for the next few days. Just send someone to pick them up and tell me the approximate numbers you need. I really appreciate it, that will allow the money destined for that purpose to be redirected to the reconstruction funds that I am preparing for the worst situation Tsunade side with relief Danzo and Saratobi left a bleeding wound with their internal and unnecessary confrontations in the village ledger due to bribery and embezzlement from their clans. I have met with the daimyo several times, but he has not agreed to increase the assistance he provides. How bad is the situation? If all was peace and quiet, the village would need 15 years of missions to recover the previous fiscal status. Tsunade shook her head in disappointment. How much money did they waste? Tony was curious. 
the total? Around 80 million that should be circulating in the village Tsunade gave a figure after quickly checking another document on the table currently I have somehow managed to recover 20 million with Shizen's help, but it's still not enough. I really need a drink. Tony rubbed his chin with one hand and reached into his clothing with his other hand, searching for something. Tsunade's eyes lit up, thinking she had a new drink, but she just pulled out a piece of paper, which deflated her. Excuse me. She took a pen from the table and wrote something on the paper before handing it back and giving the paper to Tsunade. What's this? Tsunade carelessly took the paper and looked at it above her, with the intention of leaving it with the rest of the documents next to her. She blinked twice and after rubbing her eyes, she began to count carefully. One zero, two zeros, three zeros. Two hundred and seventy million. Tsunade couldn't sit still anymore and she jumped to stand up and look at Tony Tony, you. Take it as a little help for the village apart from the emergency dry rations Tony shrugged as he laughed at Tsunade's exaggerated reaction my business has been going very well these years and I don't lack that bit of money. Which was true, taking that kind of money out of his funds was like taking a few shovelfuls of desert sand to try to form an artificial beach somewhere else. If you don't pay attention, you won't even notice it's missing. The next thing she saw was a blur of white and green that soon made everything dark and a soft, padded sensation on her face made it impossible for her to breathe. It is more than enough. Tsunade said happily as she hugged him tightly and jumped thank you. Thanks. I can't. Breathe. Oh oh. Where am I? Tony woke up in a daze and looked around to get his bearings. He was stretched out on a couch in a small room shizun. You woke up already, Shizen greeted him and approached him, are you feeling better now? Tsunadesima said you fainted in her office all of a sudden. Tony tried to remember. Yes, he fainted, but there wasn't just one reason. It was more like two big reasons. I guess I was more tired than I thought, it won't happen again he trained Shizen and after exchanging a few additional words to catch up on what happened, he left for home. Tsunade sent a message to the other four villages with the warning of what Akatsuki's purpose was for their Jinchurikis, the full information of each member, remembering especially Zetsu's stealthy infiltration ability. He did not mention some sensitive information for now because no one would believe him. But soon they got news that Akatsuki had already got their hands on the two-tailed Jinchuriki, in other words, Haydn and Kakuzu had already finished with her. This made the villages take the matter more seriously and start taking more serious measures. Too bad they were still on each other's guard, it seems that unless something important enough happens, nothing like the Kage summit will happen. Ding! The host has fulfilled a hidden achievement. Hidden achievement take fate in your fist, following the plot is for wimps. Condition intervene in the established course by performing actions that cause huge changes in the development of events. Hidden reward VIP passes to the Gourmet Battle Coliseum. Can be claimed later. Wow, wait, system, said Tony in confusion, shouldn't I have fulfilled this achievement long ago? Even if you don't take what happened with Karen or Taiyuya as a big change, you'll agree that Danzo's fall should fulfill the requirement. No. Danzo's fall certainly caused a change, but not as big a change as the host believes. The actions required to fulfill the hidden achievement should be on the level of killing Sasuke during his escape three years ago or the host becoming the new Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed One. And is revealing Akatsuki's information even comparable? The information delivered by the host includes critical parts such as Abito Uchiha's survival and his insanity, the existence of the Rinnegan, the Munai plan, and the gold that Black Zetsu has been fighting for centuries. Looking at it that way, it actually does affect the development quite a bit, nodded Tony, and what kind of rewards is this? VIP passes for the Gourmet Battle Coliseum. These passes allow the host to access the Gourmet Battle Coliseum. In the Coliseum, the host will be able to fight against enemies of his choice from a list in the battle arena and after each victory, he will get a reward depending on the defeated enemy. There will be an optional pause between each fight for the host to recover. Warning! Summoning contracts and some skills will not be able to be used in the Coliseum. The host can hand out leftover passes to invite more people as spectators, after all, what kind of Coliseum would it be without an audience? Special VIP Rule Spectators can join the arena and help the host fulfill the victory conditions in each battle and will also receive a small reward for it, but they can only participate if the host gives his consent. Warning 
The host is protected by the system, so defeat in battle is not a problem, but if a spectator helps and dies, it will be permanent. If the battle ends in victory, they regain their best state as long as they have a single breath left. Additional note passes can only be used once. How tough are those enemies? Asked Tony. The system cannot give specific information until the host accesses the Colosseum, but can reveal that there is a bit of all levels. I see Tony pulled out the passes and counted them there aren't many, I'll have to think hard about who to invite since it can only be a small group. By the way, will time also stop in the real world when I go to the Colosseum? Regardless of how many battles the host and company decide to have, time in the real world only passes in the equivalent of one second. Good. Now I just have to think of a backstory for this. Returning home, he found Enko who had returned from her mission and was listening with a beer in hand to Karen about what happened in Sunagakir firsthand. Tayuya was slumped on the couch board and when she saw Tony, she gave him a wild welcoming smile. Girls, we need to talk, he told them seriously. The next morning, at the Hokage's office. Do you want to entrust and shrank mission to the village? Tsunade looked at him without understanding Tony's sudden request. Yes. Even to say it's shrank would be an understatement, I would rate it SS. If it's for the village's money, you've actually done enough. No, Tsunade Tony interrupted her by raising her hand this is very serious, it's important to me and there could be deaths. My strength is not bad, but maybe it won't be enough. Give me the details before anything else. Tsunade listened attentively to the story that Tony pulled out of his sleeve and was somewhat perplexed. So you say. I try to summarize the situation that the king of one of your summonings gave you permission to participate, just once, in that strange coliseum where the laws of time and space are different. The challengers get rewards for each victory and you can take some people as reinforcement or spectators. Precisely. I want to enlist the help of some village ninjas so we can get better rewards, they can also get benefits if needed and the village will get another cash injection. Do you have someone in mind for the mission? Indeed. I've seen that many of you have said that the new translator is better, so I'll be using it from now on feel free to make more suggestions and check out my Patreon. He had given some thought to the people he was going to take with him. The first criterion was that they were from Kanoha, as he didn't want to waste time traveling to the other villages. Then there was trust, while his made-up story resulted in it not being something as confidential as the devil fruits, it wasn't something he would like to be told around either. Finally, there was the level of strength and potential. I would like Karen, Tayuya, Enko, Lee, Choji, Shikamaru, and you, Tsunade, to make up the entire team, Tony said. The reasons for the first three people was obvious. Karen was his little sister and a new devil fruit user, Taiyuya was his partner, and Anko was his sensei. Lee was a battery of energy and physical strength that should be able to help a lot, and strengthening him was equivalent to having another guy. Choji was also family and the fighting experience would do him good to bring out more potential, while Shikamaru was like bringing a super strategist with him. And there was no need to explain how tremendously versatile it was to have Tsunade. He would have liked to add more people, but he had no more passes in his hands. Just imagine taking Naruto, letting him run amok in every battle and every time they win, he recovers as if nothing happened. Plot armor, gentlemen. I wanted to take Kakashi, but he was recovering in the hospital and as for Jiraiya. I didn't want to waste a pass on him. Me? Tsunade pointed at herself in surprise before laughing well, I haven't been able to stretch my muscles for a while. It would be a good anti-stress method. So. Kanoha will take the mission. Tsunade nodded with a somewhat excited expression, since you want to maximize the results, I suggest alerting everyone to prepare and carry out the mission tomorrow. Agreed, Tony nodded. He provided 8 million as payment and left. All the participants were informed of the special mission they were to participate in and its difficulty, so they prepared thoroughly. Tsunade didn't even drink that night. The next morning. Equipped and ready for the challenge, Tsunade, Shikamaru and Tony were in their Kanoha vests and Lee was particularly motivated at the thought of such an incredible training. They were all holding in their hands a VIP pass with the words Gourmet Battle Coliseum written in gold and next to it was a drawing of a piece of meat with two bones sticking out of the sides. Shizun rubbed her hands somewhat nervously and Sakura looked at them enviously. If it wasn't because she understood that the slots were limited, she would have wanted to participate to become stronger. 
We have already gone over the rules, is everyone ready? Tsunade asked. No one said anything, so Tsunade looked at Tony. System, use the passes, she said mentally. Order confirmed. Host and company will be dispatched in five seconds. Good luck. Get ready, Tony warned before closing his eyes and pretending to activate the opportunity. A puff of smoke erupted a few seconds later and they disappeared from the Hokage's office. By the time the group regained their vision, they were standing in a Shimatsu no Valkyria-style stadium. This place is huge, Shikamaru couldn't help but comment as he looked around. Big words appeared in the sky. Please welcome the challenger Tony Akimichi. Please select your opponent from the list and once your choice is confirmed, the battle will start after a five-minute countdown. Remember that your companions may join the battle if you wish, but any deaths are not the responsibility of the Colosseum. Also, there is no such thing as surrender in this place, it's glory for victory or death for defeat. The first thing Tony did was to check what skills were limited in the Colosseum. Breath of N, Pearl Jam and Modified Technique of Turkey's Living Dummies. Those were his three abilities nullified along with the inability to use his summoning contracts. That meant he could only use the Devil Fruit Power, the power to transform tomato into magma, the Gourmet Cell abilities and the Derouse Knives. I'm going to check the list of opponents, he told them as a screen appeared in front of him. Everyone stood next to him or behind him to see what they would be facing. The list was fairly simple, it had a picture, the name of the opponent and a line with the reward for victory. Image. Opponent Crocodile Galala. Reward for victory. Image. Opponent Flying Peach Squirrel. Reward for victory. Image. Opponent Demonic Snake. Reward for victory. Image. Opponent Tommy Rod. Opponent Sphinx Salamander. Opponent Mountain Eating Pelican. Opponent Armand Felix. Opponent Ficus Daltonfant. Opponent Monkey King Bambina. Tony's mind went blank. Tony double-checked a few pages and confirmed the fact that all eligible opponents belonged to one of the worlds where food is the core of everything Toriko. But the roster in front of him was much more complete than he knew. Leaving aside the beasts, there were characters like Tommy Rod or special preparation ingredients like the Balloon Whale. Most frighteningly, there were opponents like King Monkey Bambina towards the bottom of the list, which was simply. You seem to know something about the opponents. Commented Tayuya insightfully raising an eyebrow as he noticed his partner's expression. The others looked at Tony, any information was useful at that moment. Yes, they are ingredients, Tony summarized, these beasts have something called, capture level, and the higher it is, the harder it will be to defeat them, find them or get them. But at the same time, the better the taste and benefits for whoever eats it. But there are humans too. Choji exclaimed. Humans are also food in the natural world, Anko replied nonchalantly. Do you have details about each beast? Shikamaru asked. I only know of a few, Tony shook his head, I can say that the beasts at the top of the list are the simplest and as we go down the level it increases. For example, this pudding pig could be defeated by an ordinary civilian with a stick in his hand. But for the Galala crocodile, civilians are no different than chickens. And these options? Karen pointed to a spot slightly below the top of the list they look like common vegetables, they don't seem to be dangerous. Those are ingredients that require special preparation Tony explained this ozone grass you pointed out requires the collaboration of two people to remove the outer leaves at the same time and must even be bitten at the same time to prevent it from rotting. Everyone listened carefully to every detail. No one wondered why Tony knew about these things, when they knew that the opponents were food in one way or another, for them it was natural that he had some knowledge. What is the plan? Asked Tsunade. I think we should first check if my estimates of his strength are correct proposed Tony the Galala crocodile has a level 5 catch, which is low enough so we won't have big problems, but it will help you to get a general idea of the type of strength. What do you know about him? Despite being a bit big, don't underestimate his speed. He has enough bite force to snap off an arm like a twig and you need to watch out for the barren leeches he has in his mouth. If they suck your blood, you won't stop bleeding for half a day or until we win. Let's go with that then it was smart to verify the information to avoid having unwanted accidents. Chosen opponent Crocodile Galala. Victory conditions eliminate the opponent. 
select if you want a solo confrontation or you'll get help from your companions. I will fight together with everyone. Countdown begins, get ready. Since they had just arrived, everyone was in top form and I needed to know how the rewards were divided. Otherwise, he had chosen Lee and Choji to test the waters. Once the countdown was over, a large crimson crocodile appeared in front of everyone. He looked around in confusion and when he caught the presence of some prey in front of him, he began to drool. I don't like the way it's looking at me, Tsunade commented in annoyance. The Galala crocodile used the momentum of its six legs and jumped at high speed to try to bite Lee, Anko and Shikamaru all at once. Kanoha Whirlwind Lee kicked the beast and managed to deflect it. But then he noticed that its legs had some leeches on them. Anko pulled out several snakes to try to hinder the huge beast, but the Galala crocodile effortlessly shattered the bindings. Shikamaru tried to connect his shadow, but despite his success his strength simply wasn't up to par. Choji expanded his fists and punched the back of the Galala crocodile, causing damage but scowling at the hardness of the scales. Taiyuya used the sound of the flute to try to alter the perception of balance, which proved helpful for Choji to dodge a pigtail that nearly hit him. Tsunade landed a punch to the side and left a clear dent in the body. A much more fitting result than the others. Karen. Tony shouted at him as he pulled out the Dirouse knives and threw a rock in front of him. Room. Karen reached down and a blue semi-sphere covered everyone, before anyone could react shambles. The Galala crocodile suddenly exchanged places with the stone in front of Tony and with a flick of the knives, its head and tail were separated from the central part of the body. Tony could have quickly dealt with the opponent, but he needed the others to have first-hand experience. Victory condition successfully met. Congratulations on obtaining the reward Physical Strength Enhancement Minor. A specialist will be provided to deliver the reward. What was that? Taiyuya and the rest were speechless. They barely managed to push or damage the beast because they underestimated the creature, believing it was just a bigger animal. The only one who gave better results was Tsunade, who considered it some kind of chakra beast. Karen explained to them while catching her breath that it was a new ability she had developed, as she agreed with Tony after eating the oak oak nomi. It was the first time she had exchanged something so big and heavy, so the amount of energy it took was not small. You are amazing Karen Tsunade sighed as she thought she understood how complicated it was to develop such a skill. Naruto was from the Uzumaki clan, but he never showed interest in studying properly. What's the specialist that was mentioned? Taiyuya asked as he looked at Tony. Before Tony could answer that he doesn't know, a female voice echoed in the Colosseum. That would be me. A slim, beautiful, youthful woman with fair skin appeared at some point next to him. Her hair is short and dark in color, with large, long-lashed eyes with thin lips that showed a tender smile. She was wearing a long dark-colored dress with a neckline, while on her waist she has tied a large white apron. Her neck has a dark-colored necklace with a white line. Everyone looked at her surprised by her sudden appearance and when Tony recognized who she was, his eyes almost popped out of their sockets. Frozy. The renowned goddess chef made her appearance. Era era you must be the challenger, Tony, Frozy looked interestedly at the gourmet ninja and his derouse knives, good knives. Your cooking level is still simple, but you have a good foundation. They all expected Tony to laugh at such an opinion, after all, they had tasted the food he prepared and they didn't know anyone who was more skilled than him in the kitchen. But what startled them was that he didn't refute it. Froisesima is absolutely right, Tony admitted somewhat embarrassed. In fact, the recipes he knew how to cook, his experiences and his skills were mostly provided by the system and the food could reach that level when combined with his devil fruit. To say that his base was good was correct and fair, but he simply didn't know how to improve beyond that point as there was no one in Naruto's world who was worthy of teaching him. Let me introduce myself for those of you who don't know me, she looked away from Tony and turned to the rest, I'm Frozy, and I'm a humble chef who enjoys cooking. I will be in charge of cooking the Galala crocodile and after eating my dishes, you will get the reward from the Colosseum. As Frozy approached the crocodile and checked its condition to think about how to cook it, everyone approached Tony. Who is he really? They never saw Tony being humble when it came to food. She's one of the best chefs out there Tony didn't know how to explain the whole story behind that woman, so he tried to be concise we are very lucky, I'm just an amateur compared to her. Karen and the rest opened their eyes wide when they heard the statement. 
I'm going to watch while she cooks, see if I can learn anything, Tony didn't want to miss the opportunity to watch such a legend in action. He moved away from the group that had been shocked and still showed no signs of reacting to stand at a respectful distance from Frozy. Close enough to see how he cooks, but not so close as to interfere with possible movements. A simple but equipped kitchen appeared next to Frozy and began to cook. He took out the recognizable Cinderella kitchen knife and cut the meat so delicately, that only once he touched it to move it, the marks rebelled and the pieces of meat separated. Do you have any additional seasoning or ingredients? Asked Frozy without stopping waving his hands. Tony thought for a moment and using his devil fruit ability, he transformed some broken rocks from the sand into onions, tomatoes and carrots. He also prepared some aqua laguna salt and some basic spices. Will that be enough? Tony asked, I can get more stuff. Some honey, soy sauce and nuts would be nice, commented Frozy interested in the peculiar demonstration in front of her. Maybe he was a Sicilia as well as a chef. He cut the vegetables into bit-sized pieces. He pulled out several metal picks that he held between the hollows of his fingers and in the blink of an eye, the meat had been stabbed, turning into skewers interspersed with the onions and carrots. He took the tomatoes, honey, soy sauce and spices to prepare a dark reddish sauce and while the skewers were grilling on the fire, he applied the sauce with a brush as he turned them over. The smell caused everyone to start drooling uncontrollably, especially in the case of Choji and Tony, who practically had a waterfall. When the skewers were finished being made, he sprinkled them with the crushed powdered nuts and served them on plates that no one knows where he got them from. I thank all the food in this world, bon appetit. Everyone couldn't resist any longer and took a skewer on their plates. The meat juices are glistening. It's as if it was made with jewels, Tsunade commented in amazement. Delicious. Choji was crying. And the higher the catch level the better it tastes. Shikamaru was puzzled. If something so weak could be so good, what kind of taste would the places at the bottom of the list have? After Tony ate, he understood the difference between Frozy and him even better. In the past, he got some ingredients from Toriko's world, but he couldn't get as much out of them as she did. In fact, even if he saw how the sauce was made and how she cooked, he was sure he would not achieve as good a result. The proportions of the ingredients, the cooking time, the layers of sauce. It's been a long time since I've eaten Galala crocodile meat, Frozy commented as he also ate a skewer, Emmon, this salt has an interesting aftertaste. Tony handed out some drinks for the meal, which Frozy tasted with interest. Two hours later, there was nothing left of the crocodile Galala. They finished all its meat most of it eaten by Tony, then made a soup with its bones to warm up a bit and to everyone's complete shock, Frozy and Tony chewed the roasted bones like crackers. Choji tried to imitate them, but almost knocked his teeth out. I feel the power of youth within me burning like never before. Lee shouted as he started doing push-ups out of nowhere. In fact, I feel that my physical strength has grown a little, nodded Tsunade as she clenched her fist. Even the weakest of them all, Shikamaru, felt his muscles improve by a margin and watched as his arms gained some bulk. Congratulations on your first victory in the Gourmet Battle Coliseum. Special Reward Knocking Skill Description An extremely precise impact on the target's nerves that renders him immobile while keeping him alive to preserve his coolness. After everyone had finished eating, Frozy said goodbye, but not before giving Tony some cooking tips. Small, but fundamental details that would make their meal even more delicious. Now that the group had a better understanding of what the confrontations were like, they began to choose creatures that Tony was somewhat familiar with, such as the Troll Kong, Absaurus, Crocodile Shark, Rub and a Mystery Bird. For inedible enemies like the Troll Kong that had too much fibrous muscle, they got other ingredients like rainbow fruit as a reward. Combat after combat, they came to face the demonic snake in a tough fight that ended in knocking out Shikamaru due to an oversight and Lee was almost swallowed by the creature, only thanks to Fenrir intervening and rescuing him tragedy was avoided. After that, they chose the balloon whale as their opponent, whose victory condition was not to eliminate it, but to knock it out and successfully cook it. At that time, Tsunade's medical skills and Karen's devil fruit skill were critical, because although Tony was able to knock out with his newly acquired skill after several attempts and remembered the method of removing the poison sack, he had no experience dealing with living beings and the location of the poison sack changed for each whale. Tsunade was delighted when she obtained a jar of garana eel preserved for five years in Shochu. 
white apples, cheese rabbit, neo tomatoes, almond cabbage, sakiyashi fruit with 50% alcohol, air aqua, paradise rice, ten yolk egg. The ninjas were impressed with the food. Even more so when Tony explained to them that he would make it available for sale in their stores when they returned. After all, Tony only needed to eat something once to reproduce it using his devil fruit power, so the more he managed to harness in this place, the better. Tsunade and Choji were the most aware of all of the immense benefits of these meals on their bodies. The Akimichi clan would undoubtedly be the ones to gain the most profit from eating these things and Tsunade was even considering asking Tony to only sell the lower catch level ingredients, otherwise he would only be strengthening possible enemies in the future. But as the catch level increased, the fights were more complicated and not everyone could keep up, even if after finishing them they recovered. Choji and Shikamaru reached their limit after the confrontation inside the regal mammoth to get the jewel meat. Anko also couldn't bear to participate after going through a complicated fight with a forest that was trying to devour them to get the BB corn. Lee was left mentally stressed after having to go through an icy environment and having to flee from the Hellboros to get the century soup. Being about to be eaten twice was not pleasant. Although he was able to do remedial therapy thanks to his reward being a wall penguin summoning contract. The adults were ferocious, but the hatchlings are adorable and easily attached to anyone. Now Karen, Tayuya, Tsunade and Tony are the only ones who can still follow. Fenrir also started acting up since the BB corn came into play. He had currently grown to 4 meters tall, doubling his size and improving his battle instincts. Noticing that they were starting to get to go uphill with the matchups, Tony decided to take advantage of the situation before going on against more difficult opponents and chose a series of opponents especially for Karen and Tsunade. To be specific, he chose creatures that exist in a country specialized in healing, called life. Thanks to that, Tsunade obtained some seeds and a way to cultivate Dr. Aloe in Naruto's world. A plant that serves for external wounds, but also heals cells with necrosis caused by burns or frostbite. Natural bandages. But that was not all. He obtained some specimens of butterfly therapy, blood bug and medicinal bee that they could breed as soon as they returned. The Aburane clan would have immense joy and medicine in Kanoha would advance by leaps and bounds, of that there is no doubt. Karen for her part obtained diet fish, blood tetras, melanin gurumi, cuticle berries, morning roses and tulip therapist. With them she could not only open the best spa in the world with beauty treatments impossible to replicate, but the cultivation of tulip therapist could become a real lifesaver for all the ninjas of Kanoha, since it is a plant that eats wounds. And they didn't need to worry about anyone stealing specimens, the methods for breeding and maintaining the plants, fish and insects were extremely specific and specialized. The only pity is that they couldn't get the resurrection seed, a delicate seed that yields a flower that uses DNA information as food and recovers entire limbs. After a profitable streak of bounties and preparing thoroughly, Tony chose to fight the Sphinx Salamander with a capture level of 92 which was the worst fight so far. It did not require killing the creature, but following a series of instructions such as where to hit, with what force, etc. To obtain the mellow tail. Fenrir, Tsunade and Tony had to combine their efforts to hit each part in a particular way in a predetermined order while Taiyuya was in charge of distracting the Sphinx and Karen got everyone to safety when they were in a bad spot and couldn't dodge the counterattack. After managing to obtain the mellow cola, everyone got some jars made from the tailed crystal tree material, except for Taiyuya and Tony, who got a completely different reward. Perhaps due to the affinity with the character, Taiyuya got infernal ears along with the way to train the voice as Zebra while Tony on his side, learned directly to use the indiscriminate attack sound bazooka. The only catch was that unlike Taiyuya, he would need to drink mellow cola to recover from throat damage every time he used it. Taiyuya also withdrew after getting such a reward and Karen was already too fatigued from using the devil fruit, so only Tony, Tsunade and Fenrir were left. After some thought, Tony selected the electric phoenix as his opponent, as he felt there was a good chance of getting the ozone grass as a reward. Unfortunately, after defeating the creature, what he got was not what he expected, but a selection of vegetables from the vegetable heaven. Tsunade was also reaching her limit after fighting the phoenix, so Tony didn't hesitate to choose other opponents to take advantage of in an area as special as the life country. The Drinking Archipelago They fought none other than the Emerald Dragon, who has a high-class wine on his back and after almost four hours of confrontation, Tony managed to knock him out at the cost of breaking an arm and invited everyone to taste the emerald wine. The reward? 
A first-class brandy spring, a waterfall of beer, a river of cocktail, a pool of refined sake, a shower of champagne, etc. Tsunade was so excited to get the drinks and medicine, that if it weren't for Tayuya and Karen's presence, she would have jumped on Tony and started kissing him as only adults know how. Would you mind sharing some liquor with this old man? A shaky old man with a toupee approached them. Master Knockout, Jairu. Tony recognized him by the distinctive hairstyle. Of course, come in. That man was an alcoholic among alcoholics. Once someone asked him how often he visited the drinking archipelago. His answer. Eight times a week. Hee hee, thank you. I didn't come empty-handed, I have some salmon roe grapes here that my grandson brought me recently, try some. Tsunade and Jairu felt comfortable in no time due to their undeniable passion for drinking and their knowledge of the human body and exchanged some stories of their youth. While the two were getting uncontrollably drunk, the others couldn't handle the alcohol and lost consciousness. Who would think that a glass the size of a hand and with such a bland taste could knock them out? The only ones who held on were Tony, Enko and Tayuya, who had a higher resistance to alcohol than expected. Tony expected it from Enko, since despite not drinking as much as Tsunade, she was also the type to enjoy drinks. Tayuya on the other hand, was even surprised at herself. You're really funny people, it's been a while since I've shared a meal with someone new Jairo laughed as he approached the three, leaving behind Tsunade lying on the floor on her side but why only you have developed your gourmet cells. That's strange. The question puzzled Tony and Jairo must have understood his reaction. I see, you guys have been fighting so many times that you stopped checking the rewards at the Colosseum, haven't you? Tony nodded a little embarrassed. He kept an eye out most of the time, but against not so important creatures he didn't pay as much attention, since the rewards were smaller. Who else has gourmet cells now? The red-haired girl next to you, the one who's still conscious and the boy with spirals on his cheeks, Jairo pointed with his thumb, the boy got them when you finished with the balloon whales and the girl after the BB corn. Although it seems that only the girls evolved a bit when she drank the mellow cola, which seems to be compatible with her. Anko took another drink and seemed to want to ask a question, but her eyes looked up and she fell backwards to the ground. At the same time, Tayuya fell asleep resting her head on Tony's shoulder. Ah, the love of youth Jairu took a long drink and looked beyond while a faint smile peeked through his lips, recalling some moments from his past memories I wonder how Setsuno is now, I miss her dishes. Tony transformed the liquor in a glass into fire whiskey and offered it to Jairu. This is it. Jairu took the glass and sniffed it carefully interesting, I've had a myriad of drinks and I can still find new ones. What's it called? Fire whiskey. Jairu drank it in one gulp and moments later, burped fire for a few seconds. Not bad at all. He nodded in amusement as he patted his legs, would you mind giving me a few dozen barrels? I have to let Ichiryu and the others try it. Sure, Tony carefully pushed Taiyuya away, leaning her against Fenrir's fur and walked towards the pool of refined sake. He dipped his hand in it and turned it all into fire whiskey. Can you change the composition of the drinks to make new ones? Boy, I envy your talent, Jairo sighed. How cool is it to be able to create all the drink you want? I always return a favor of alcohol, let me do some thinking, Jairo rubbed his chin as he considered, you don't need tools, those knives made by milk are excellent. You also seem to know how knocking, albeit somewhat crude, that works out with experience as you use it. I'm not good at cooking, so I can't do anything in that direction either. I could give you some ingredients from the gourmet world, but your body couldn't handle it. You already have that curious battle wolf with you and don't need an animal companion. Tough, tough. Tony was silent, but he would actually love for me to give him some ingredients from the gourmet world. Despite the fights he faced in the Colosseum, they were all human world beasts. The strongest creature there is one called for beasts with a capture level of 320 or was it 350? That only appears every few hundred years. But in the gourmet world the catch levels easily shoot up to 700 or over 1000 for the most common creatures. If I had to point out the strongest, then it would be the kings like the Bambina monkey with a catch level of 6000. No matter how I look at it, I couldn't beat a gourmet world creature in the Colosseum. Give me some of the ultimate candy, Earth. An air salad is good too. Or at least let me try some bubble fruits. I know. Jairu slapped the palm of his hand with his fist come, 
try drinking this. It's called Quelpo Sake. Tony raised an eyebrow and reached over to take the cup Jairu offered him. As soon as he held it, the contents evaporated. Tony. I see, try this next Jairu brought out some more plates this is star rice, this is sunshine cheese, this is. Tony tried to eat what Jairu offered him, but he only managed to eat one plate out of five. He couldn't help but look at Jairu with suspicion. Is this how you want to return the favor? You managed to eat a little, that means you still have a chance, Jairu commented as he turned his face and ignored Tony's gaze, tell me, have you ever heard of something called food immersion? Tony blinked and became a little sluggish. Food immersion. Maybe the drink is giving me auditory hallucinations, but did he just mention the legendary food immersion? The secret technique of food honor. It can't be, can it? You seem to know what I'm talking about, that's good. How about I teach you a little? The next few hours were humiliating for Tony. He had to go through a completely different kind of confrontations, like holding a fixed posture without moving while special cacti kept shooting needles harder than steel at the slightest deviation, causing multiple superficial but bleeding wounds. And after all that happened, Jairu came to a conclusion. The boy had talent, but he would need years to achieve true food immersion, if he could achieve it at all. But at least he mastered a high level in the honor of food, which already gave him many benefits. Taiyuya and Choji watched carefully from the bleachers. According to Tony, these things could really help them get stronger if practiced correctly. Taiyuya was fine with the honor of food, but when Choji understood what food immersion was, he felt like he had seen the light. If Tony had been alone, perhaps he would have contemplated staying a few months under Jairu's tutelage, but doing it while accompanied and being watched wasn't going to work. It was nice to meet you, young man, Jairu said goodbye in his huge form as he carried the barrels of liquor Tony gave him. The others were trying to figure out how a feeble old man had become a giant after poking his shoulders a bit. What should be the ultimate challenge? Tony considered, no matter how I think about it, the rest of the creatures are too strong for me. Maybe I should take him on. After pondering for several minutes, he finally chose his opponent. Fenrir, called Tony, pay attention. Because Tony's opponent was Guinness, Fenrir's father, with a capture level of 6090. He didn't even know if he would recognize the puppy. A large battle wolf appeared in the arena of the Colosseum and before Tony could think of how to act, his mind went blank and he collapsed. Back in Kanoha. What the hell? Tony complained as soon as he appeared why did he have to use his sense of smell from the beginning? Couldn't he have a little mercy on his son's friend? Due to the Guinness search technique, Tony became completely immobile as if his soul had left his body. He didn't even know how long it lasted. It was only when he woke up three hours later that the others explained what happened. After Tony's fall, Fenrir pounced on Guinness and got a one-sided father-son beating for two hours. Well, it looks like Guinness still has his heart as a father. With Guinness' strength, if he had really been angry or mildly annoyed with Fenrir, there was no way the young battle wolf would have stood up to the king of his race for so long. Clearly his father was giving him some battle lessons as they spent quality time together. Are you back already? Shizun exclaimed. They really only disappeared for a second. M nodded Tsunade, it was a really de-stressing experience, but I have to get back to work, she sighed though her expression was one of interest, Shizun. Call the Aburame clan and the Yamanaka clan, I have some important missions for them. Karen and Sakura, stay, I'll need you to help me run some tests on some plants and insects. Shikamaru, I want you to write a detailed report of everything that has happened. Anko and Lee, I want you to stop by the hospital for a complete in-depth examination for a better understanding of the changes in our bodies after. The Bounties Tsunade didn't mention food or drink when she remembered that neither Shizun nor Sakura could taste anything with them. Good thing Tony could get more with his unique jutsu. Tony, called Tsunade, Jairu explained to me a little bit what gourmet cells are, as rare as they are, so I will count on you to guide Choji and Taiyuya now that they have theirs. You're the one who knows the most about it. Tony nodded in agreement. In fact, I should talk to the Akimichi clan soon. Choji's gourmet cells have been integrated into his DNA and that means that his descendants also have the possibility of having their own inherited gourmet cells. He may need to add new techniques and knowledge to the clan so that they do not cause more harm than good. Especially in the face of the possibility of gourmet demons emerging. 
As it turned out, there was no need for me to transfer them artificially. So noisy. Taiyuya frowned, his new hellish ears were still adapting and were too sensitive. Besides, he felt an itch in his throat and the urge to start screaming and cursing. More than usual. Taiyuya, go to one of the more secluded cleared training grounds and start practicing your new techniques. But remember to put up a no trespassing sign or you might hurt someone without realizing it. Tony took her hand to calm her down and gave her a bottle of water that he transformed into mellow cola I'll accompany Choji to the Akimichi clan and then I'll come and get you. 